Hi, I'm Peachy. Hi, I'm Jeff. Hello, I'm Patrick. And as always, if you want the opportunity to get some early access, as well as asking our guests some questions before anyone else gets a chance to do that, then join, consider joining our Patreon. There's plenty of benefits. We've got Discord. We also have lots of other tiers and stuff like that where you can get some feedback with me and maybe do some one-to-ones. One-to-one sessions with Peachy. Oh, yeah. I'll even wear my clothes as well. So <laughs> don't worry about that. But we're not here to talk about that. We're here to talk about our guest, who is now christening our new digs. We have... Lloyd Davis, some of you might not know who that is. We all know him as the painting coach. <laughs> hey, Lloyd, yeah. thanks for joining hey. us. Peachy, Jeff, Pat, very, very happy to be here and christening the new digs. <laughs> yes. And also very yeah. curious about what a one to one with Peachy might look like. I mean, <laughs> you don't, don't close your eyes. <laughs> <laughs> Maybe, maybe post-recording, it can, we can have a chat, we can have a look at a one-to-one and compare brush tips. <laughs> brush, oh, compare brush tips. Brush tips, yeah. yeah. This, this got yeah. weird, real quick. <laughs> <laughs> I'm a flat head large. <laughs> I'm a one round. I like a bullet tip myself. But. So, yeah, I mean, it's been on the cards for a while. We, we did ask you a little while back, but obviously um, travel was a nightmare coming from Wales because there's loads of guards at the gates like, starting from coming in yeah, England. Yeah, my they? passport had expired, so I, I, had to, uh, I had to get a new passport and then I had to get clearance from, uh, from HQ. Yeah, yeah. Uh, and then, yeah, I was, I was allowed to travel freely, three and a half hours up various motorways yesterday. Luckily, it stayed dry, so it, it, wasn't, it wasn't a wet run because that would have been, been awful at night. But yeah, it was, it was a nice drive up. And uh, it has been a while come in, but I'm really glad to be here. And, and I, I was saying to the boys earlier, I am here of my own free will. Uh, I haven't been coerced uh, into coming uh, at, at all, which is, which, is, which is really, really nice. And I suppose to start off uh, going back to say thanks to Pat, actually, because Pat actually joined my Patreon just after you started the channel, wasn't it? And yeah, oh, yeah, before you yeah. started the channel, and, and yeah. you, you dropped in there because it was about the Iron Warriors tutorial. Yeah. Um, yes, and Pat dropped in, and we've kind of just built up a bit of a, a working relationship since. So yeah, it's really, really good to be here and actually sort of put, uh, or just meet you, I just put faces to the names anyway on the, on the channel. But it's nice to meet everyone, and uh, and yeah, I'm looking forward to this. It's, it's, yeah, weirdly for me, it's like I've, I've only ever seen your hands and your brush tip, which sounds dodgy. <laughs> um, but recently, obviously, you've you know sticking your face around as well, which is good to, to get. Because yeah. otherwise, I wouldn't have known who was at the door this morning. <laughs> like, I know, hey, the guy at the car said, "Are you Chris Peach?" Yeah. And he was like, no. "Who the hell is that?" <laughs> Because, yeah, everyone's first is, no, uh, no, 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 why, I mean, who, who are you, who are you looking for? I, I definitely had, I think everybody, um, to a certain extent, you th- you hear the voice and mm. you, in your head you build a picture of who that person is. And and um, and for some reason, like for yourself, I don't think, because on your Discord, um, you have like rugby and mm. and all that sort of stuff. So I'm like, okay, this is going to be like a big hench Welshman, <laughs> and, and I'm like, he is a big hench Welshman. <laughs> he is. Um, I think like I I always assumed like Pete the War Gamer was a lot older, yeah, and, well, and just like old and wise. Well, Pete and, the War Gamer manages to look like a six former, but sound like the head of year. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Yeah. I've never yeah. put it. Like, that's genius. Oh, I hope you're watching, Pete. <laughs> Compliments do not stop. Uh, yeah. He's, he's going to stop supporting you. <laughs> but that's that's. I'm quite lucky with my Discord and with my patrons. I'm very grateful for them. Um, I'm not going to shout them all out by name because they just won't come down. But certainly, the the Discord is very varied because we all seem to be of a similar age and and sort of inclination in terms of things we like. But also, it just separates stuff up from all blinking moaning sometimes because we're all basically a bunch of grumpy old men uh, <laughs> so we just got different channels to moan about specific yeah. topics that annoy us yeah I, I mean i found that really interesting like with having our page on and it was some uh, terminology i heard recently which was like your vibe attracts your tribe yeah and it and it does make that's true yeah it really does you know hit yeah. with with like our patrons because they're all as mad and as mental <laughs> as we are and i guess yours are all like just really into rugby and hench and just well, <laughs> i don't think <laughs> all, yeah they're, they're all hench uh, <laughs> <laughs> They're all beautiful, beautiful men, um, and yeah. But I suppose it does it does attract them, and and that's I, I guess a little bit of if you marketing speak really when you, you market a, not market a child per se, but you certainly put out there that that's the kind of person I'm targeting. It's maybe someone who's a little bit older, who's mm. got a little bit of um, you know they've been in the hobby when they're younger, perhaps they've got kids now, so they want to get their kids into the hobby, that kind of thing. 
Um, and that's kind of the, like I said, the vibe of the channel, and that's attracted the, the, the people that I've got supporting me, which is which is really, really good because, and again, I'm very, very fortunate. We don't, <laughs> touch wood, we've never had a single argument about it, and everyone's very mature, and if somebody misunderstands something, you, we explain, and if it's taken the wrong way, it's positive, and we move on. Yeah. And the internet's not like that. Yes, yeah, <laughs> no. yeah. yeah. The, the yeah. internet is not like that. We were saying, is the internet real life or not? I'm not sure. It's kind of blended into one a little bit. At the moment. I, I do wonder sometimes with the comments that they are just bots, just like, it's just, it's just AI taking over just to give the impression that's what humans are like. They're I, not like that. I don't know. It's, it's, you can say something's blue and then somebody else will... Uh, I think you'll find it's a prismatic tone <laughs> yeah, of white. Exactly. That's, <laughs> you know, and that's, and I just think that's that's a painful way to go through life. That's a long time to yeah, go through. So, yeah. my, my, my first, uh, I guess, interaction with that level of knobbery, uh, <laughs> it's that's a good way, way to describe it, way, it, it? Yeah. was... Yeah. I, I got pulled into a thread because we were talking about a workshop. We were doing like a how to paint tanks book and we were like looking at different ways of painting tanks mm. and we got onto this this military modelling thread oh, and, it and it was the red no oxide thread. The red <laughs> oxide of the tiger tank interior. Um, and there was like so many arguments about what tone this should be and this is the exact tone oh, from the okay. factory. And so many people were just like, it's it was probably just mixed on the fly you yeah, know it was like right. you know there was a factory probably that painted it but then as yeah. the years have gone on and supply is a war yeah. you're not going to get it but it was just like this there's so many people like adamant it's like no it's this tone of red oxide the <laughs> <laughs> this, this is one of the things we do we do talk about we do we do laugh about it quite a bit on the on the discord because a couple of guys do military modeling uh, and a couple of them are ex forces and one yeah. is uh tom is ex navy i think from from canada and he'll say the same thing it's like you could say that it's a certain color paint but it's made in three different factories with slightly different ratios and by the time it's been out in the sun for five minutes yeah, yeah. Right. You, you know it's it's, it's and it's just I, I guess that that's and we'll get on to it to sort of my history and my past and and my thing in a little bit but but everyone has as human beings, we all got the, we've all got certain needs, and one of those needs is to be significant. And if somebody feels they know something that somebody mm. else doesn't, then they all oh, hang on, you know, they start to get in there, and, it, and, and you don't you dare challenge that belief that, that yeah. red oxide and is. is, you, is you're is, absolutely right, and, and it, it is the thing. The problem being is the thing sometimes with with modelling is you you feel like there's got to be a set, so that you, you've got to be of a set colour so that you know mm. what colour you're buying. But if you put, you know, in, in my regiment, if you put all of us on parade in camouflage clothing, well, there'd be about you. 17 different shades of that. Yeah. yeah, yeah. And then depending, and then if you're on exercise, a lot of us wore jungle combat trousers because they were really thin and they dried out very quickly. Mm. And they look like camouflage wear. You know when, you know when back in the day when you used to, when you were a kid and you turned the colour right up on your telly, <laughs> it looked like that, you know, browns become almost reds. So it, it's madness that people go, well, it's got to be that. And you go, yeah. if you think it's got to be that, you've not spent enough time around the military because yeah. there is so many variants. There are things. military models well, apoplectic with rage at what Jeff has just yeah. said. Well, I know, yeah. just, you know, it's, it's true. I mean, like from yeah. Napoleonics, it's like, you know, you have like a uniform, war happens, and then your red jacket for your British, some have pink because mm. it's faded so much, some have yeah. red, some have like somewhere between somewhere almost like grey because it's just so subdued and like well you warm. know this better than me because I'm, I'm not massively well upon Napoleonics but some French guys managed to get covers for their hats yeah. and others didn't yeah yeah. and you know and it was some guys were in a, some guys were still wearing a grey coat and somebody else wasn't if you think it if you think every single person is going to have a pouch or something exactly the same place as mm. the next guy or this, the, their colour is going to be the same you really you really, you know. So one of the, the things that w with Napoleonic vibe, getting into Silver Bayonet, Chosen Men stuff like that, mm. I really like, I, I love playing Napoleonic stuff. But there's uniforms I really like. So I've got like some Austrians and they're these really nice tin helmets and it was like 1797 to like 1809 that they had these. And most of the game area that we, we play with my mates is like 1812. I was like, well, they would have been, you know, superseded by that mm. point. They all have the shakos. I was like, but I really like those hats. That regiment just didn't get supplied with hats. And no one cares. Yeah. No one cares. Between my gaming mates, it's like, and it's war because, like, um, I was saying to Pat, because we did, um, like, a battle report with, like, some new periodics with Games Night. And I really wanted to do something just the white, because for, like, a, a year or two, they, they ran out of indigo dye. So they just went with white yeah. for the for the tunics. And then, like, later on, they, they brought them back in. Yeah. But not every regiment got supplied. And I'm well, just like, I could just say it would, that. It would have been expensive as well with something. Oh, exactly. Yeah. 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 It's yeah. always a really expensive dye yeah. as if well. Look, so. If you look at the British military now, we're... we're on the, we're at the point now. It's just tipping into the Royal Marines and then the new, the newly founded Ranger Regiment are about to get a different rifle. Mm. But if you painted one, yeah, 
you'd have to, and if he was wearing a helmet, you'd have to put massively minute little details on the arms to go, he's got that gun because he's commando or he's a ranger. Yeah. And they go, well, he wouldn't have that gun if he was just a member of the, the you know, the this, that and the other. And you think it's not, it's so easy to end up down a rabbit hole. Yeah, yeah. yeah it really is. I, I tell you what, I, I'm just appreciating how comfortable we are right now. But oh, we're so sidetracked. My legs, yeah. <laughs> my legs are stretched out and everything. I know, it's like, I'm just so yeah. chilled. I mean, you know, thanks to Pat for bringing your uh, Chesterfield in. It, it is a Chesterfield. Is it a Chesterfield? Yeah, well, I it's think it's, it's, a, it's, it? it's a style of, of Chesterfield. <laughs> yeah, like it's. I mean, there's a bit of a hole where the fake leather is is kind of. We, we hide it. We we'll hide it with yeah. guests. Yeah, this is what. <laughs> <laughs> I thought this was a real thing. I, I thought I thought no expense had been spared. Oh, we've got a bed city from a mate Steve, so when we get kicked yeah. out of the house by the, the missus, we might all be through the bed one night. <laughs> you need one more sofa unless you sleep on the desk. <laughs> or the gaming table space that you get yeah, in radio. Yeah, 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 yeah. It's just really sturdy. I mean, so I, a, a full-size peach. From experience, I, I can fit perfectly on that Chesterfield, um, <laughs> like head head to toe. That's um, amazing. So that's, that's pretty good. You are yeah. short. Yeah. <laughs> See, I was going to say, how would you describe your height, Pat? Or would you describe yourself as an average British male? No. Where Peachy just went straight in with your short. Yeah. I would describe him as uh, outstretched Chesterfield height. Yeah. I, Put I, that on your wall chart. Yeah, yeah. I, I prefer uh, compact. Compact. <laughs> yeah. yeah. Hatchback. Yeah. Yeah. Just like, just sporty and fun. Just sporty yeah. and fun. That's how we're going to describe you from now on. A little bit of zip to him. <laughs> Oh, so I brilliant. guess we should go back to the start and uh, <laughs> start was ask a long about time ago. like your because there's, there's going to be a lot of people that are, have watched our channel that might not necessarily know yeah. who you are. Yeah. So kind of a description of who is Lloyd, how he got into the hobby, how how you even started like the painting coach as a channel. Mm. Where did you get the name from? You just found it. Just went on to you've chat you've GPT. Asked me like five questions. I know, I'm, I'm like, and I forgot half of them. I could pick one. Right. We'll start with that. Start with the start. <laughs> I'll talk about the, the painting coach channel uh, channel name. So yeah, it's interesting to that because uh, one of the things that YouTube shows us in terms of the analytics is who whose channels that, that your viewers watch, and and there's not much crossover between my viewers and your viewers mm. from my analytics. It may be the, the other way around with you guys. Uh, so I do painting tutorials predominantly for Warhammer. Uh, the channel's been going about four and a half-ish years now. Um, so there's about 270 painting tutorials on there. There's quite a lot of <laughs> painting tutorials on there, well, yeah. uh, which is which is great. And that's, you know, I love to do the painting tutorials. In terms of where the painting coach came from, painting is pretty obvious, uh, but the coach comes probably from my professional life. Well, I do a lot of coaching and I work as a human resources professional. So YouTube's not my full-time job. I work full-time uh, in the day and at night I'm a, I'm a Warhammer painting uh, tutorial maker. Um, and really that's where the... Oops. Well, the new dicks are falling apart already. We've lost a filter. So, uh, so <laughs> Love my, that. <laughs> my true skin has now been revealed. And like, he's, a, he's a pasty white Welsh boy. Um, <laughs> so, so yeah, that's where the painting coach came from really, is just putting those, those two things together. I do often find it being particularly pretentious <laughs> as a name when you see some of the, you know, some of the talented people that, that are out there putting out painting tutorials. I mean, you know, obviously you guys, stuff Duncan, does the stuff mm. um, like Infernal Brush does yeah, Adrian Perryman I think it was uh, yeah, 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 yeah. Yeah. David Perryman David, yeah. David yeah. Perryman yeah. Yeah, yeah so he, he just uh, the, the quality of stuff is, is fantastic so I do find the name to be quite pretentious sometimes and in terms of what the channel is about and it all started off being a little bit frustrated sometimes and the Games Workshop don't do it anymore they used to put the, the pink colours on the the box mm. as to how to get yeah, this. Yeah. And they don't do it anymore because they, they never really matched up. So the whole premise of the channel is founded on how you take what's in the box and make it look like what's on the box. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, in as few-ish steps as, uh, as you possibly can so that you can get something, you know, because I think that's that's a big gap that, that we've got in the hobby perhaps because you see all these wonderful painted miniatures and you get a grey plastic sprue. I remember you saying one time you, you one of your mates went and he's like, bought the kit and you're like oh hang on a minute I forgot to tell them to get some clippers and, and, yeah. stuff, and stuff like that you know yeah, yeah, so yeah, actually, you've right, actually yeah. build these things so yeah, when you get to, when he you said to me do I just push these out with my fingers yeah yeah that's <laughs> it, yeah. That's imagine it. the bleeding <laughs> thing yeah, no, no. <laughs> also the damage on the on, 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 on yeah. the model itself and that's <laughs> well you take it for granted when you're in yeah you? exactly that's it and that's that's one of those things and, and then perhaps you, it's like well how do I actually paint this to make it because you're, you're drawn in by what you see on the box art mm. and what you see on the website well, how do I get that 
you know, I've never picked up a paintbrush in my life. So that was the premise of the channel. Uh, and when I started, my first ever tutorial was a, was a Death Guard uh, Marine, and it was using the new contrast paints not, not long after they came out. I remember that. watching that one. Yeah, so that, that was the first one. It's not the first video I ever did. Hmm. It was bombshell. Uh, <laughs> the first video I ever did on YouTube, I can't even remember what I called myself. It was probably about 13 years ago, and it was using the old paint range from Games Workshop. Yeah. It was a BL Tan, BL Tan Eldar. Um, yeah, and it's just, that was the first one. And that's when I got, I thought, right, I can do this, and I'm going to do this. And I had like a, a little camcorder set between my legs painting away happy days i did the first was like really good and i just i did a second one which is a minotaur space marine and when i went to edit it all the footage was out of focus oh no, <laughs> no. yeah so Whoa. i was just like well, i'm not gonna do this anymore and I, that was like i said it was about 13 years ago that i did that uh, and i only really came back to it then um like i said about four and a half years ago uh but i've always kind of kept my my oar in so that's the, I guess that's the channel and, and the, the origin of the name. Um, the Games Workshop, so I'm trying, I'm trying to remember all, all the questions you asked me. So I, I've been into Warhammer since the... I can help, don't worry. Yeah, it's fine, yeah, just, just for, for give you a panicked look, then ask me another question. Um, I've been into Warhammer since probably about third edition, which is the Black Templar mm, and yeah. the Dark Eldar box set. And it's, me too. It's, it's all my mother's fault. She went, <laughs> she, went, she went on a shopping trip to, uh, she probably watched this, but I don't remember that. She went on a shopping trip with her friend to Cribs Causeway, and in the store there, they had um, catalogues, the old catalogues, and she just brought a catalogue home. And it was literally wall-to-wall -wall space marines of all different yeah, colours, yeah. and, you know, I, I can't remember how old I would have been then. What year was third edition? It was, a bit, it was oh, sort of just before I started. Was it was about 97. 97. Yeah. So I would have been 14, 15. Started yeah. workshop, that has not started live or anything. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> <laughs> I picked it up in 98 and I think it still had about a yeah. year left so on it, I think. It was, it would maybe even be a little bit before third edition. So I would have been like 12, 13. Hmm. And it was like, ooh, these are all cool. But it was one of those things, uh, and going back back then, it was not cool to be into Warhammer yeah, at no, all. Yeah. Like, nobody would admit to being into Warhammer. Head flush down the toilet job. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. yeah. I mean, I was very fortunate. Well, like I, now, I was, where every man leads with it on Tinder. Well, exactly, yeah. <laughs> as I say, it's, it's, sort of, it's sort of should. Uh, I mean, I was born this big, so I never got my head flushed down the toilet. <laughs> so, so I mean, it's quite fortunate, but... Um, no, no, never going to try it. <laughs> yeah, exactly. But, um, you know, it, 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 so, so it was kind of then, and, and then we ended up... By the way, you said you were born that big. I'm really sorry. Uh, <laughs> sorry, <laughs> sorry, Mom. <laughs> yeah, Mrs. Uh, Lloyd, Mrs. I hope Lloyd. you polish that medal off. <laughs> well, she had three more afterwards. So, so, you know, much, much more pleasant experiences. Um, the yeah, so, so that was it, and I, and I got, got that catalogue. And then a couple of months later, I think it was probably for Christmas, we had the box set, and it's like, yeah, it's amazing because it's like the the newish tactical squad, the new Dark Elder, and you had a land speeder in there and stuff like that. And that was my first real basic set and they didn't really do much of it but i enjoyed the the concept of it it was also something i watched from afar it wasn't until i went to uni so probably talking about 2006 2007 i was coming towards the end of uni that i was just like do you know what i want to do something to relax i'm going to go and buy some more hammer and i did so i went into the uh, cardiff games workshop because that's where i was in uni and i bought these painting the uh, start painting a few paints in there uh, and a and a bike squad and I made them into Black Templars because nice. that's what the, yeah. I've always been drawn to the Black Templars because that was the first kind of one I got and it just went from there really and I did sort of little bits of commission painting and, and, and things and eventually it's you know it started off something to relax and then became more and more serious and got into it and it just sort of led from there really yeah. uh, in terms of Warhammer I used to play quite a lot in 5th edition I had a Space Marine army called the Iron. There was a homebrew uh, army called the Iron Tigers, and I managed to draw, paint this with, like really amazing tiger head on the side of a Land Raider. Probably couldn't do it now, uh, and it was just like everyone's like, "Oh my god, this was, this was amazing!" And it was just kind of like a dark grey scheme. But back then, we didn't have the tools we have now. Mm. Now we're just spray it Mechanicus grey. Yeah, yeah, <laughs> yeah. yeah, 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 on it. yeah. Back then, it was chaos black, and then yeah. you just build up all these coats of loads of streaky, uh, yeah, like, exactly. brush hairs. So it's, um, <laughs> yeah, so it's, it's been really interesting. I've probably been in the hobby for uh, you know, I'm forty in January, so probably you know twenty plus years, really. Yeah, in and out, and just we were talking beforehand about how much it's changed and and how more accessible I don't think it's necessarily easier but it's more accessible yeah, yeah. Uh, from, from the painting side of things yeah so that's that's my, kind of my Warhammer journey yeah I was going to say because the, the, the Black Templars was, I think was my first foray into 40k because mm. I've done Necromunda which technically is 40k but it's more of a skirmish based game but like but build a 40k army and yeah. I, I even painted my stuff from the box set as, as Black Templars but yeah it does it does take me back to that but um, yeah uh, you just made, got me thinking about like the tools of the time 
I see so many videos, and I don't know if you, you, you watch any of them, where they do like, I'm going to paint a classic model mm. using new paints. And I'm always like, we should do a new model yeah. using old, old, old methods yeah. because the yeah. stuff you had hardly anything. So imagine painting like Agron, Ang Angron with like yeah. the, a handful of paints that <laughs> were enamels and like mm. some of those Citadel paints you could get yeah. access to because AK, Vallejo, they weren't really a thing then. No. It was like, no, well, at no. least they were in their infancy. Um, yeah. So yeah, I'm always... Sitting there painting Angron with Hummel. Yeah, oh God. yeah, and just waiting twenty four hours for it to dry for before to dry, you can do the yeah. next coat. Yeah, <laughs> I was, uh, uh, and when you've woke up from the fumes, <laughs> yeah, you have yeah, yeah. time to put the next layer on those fumes. Yeah. <laughs> I do miss yeah. those because as I started off, because uh, my father used to do. Um, he doesn't so much anymore, but he did when I was younger. He had a massive model regularly, so he was kind of into that kind of stuff, and he had. Um, he kind of got me into sort of airfix kits. And I remember when I had like a Sea King, which was like one of the most, comp it was only a small mm. 172, I think it was. But certainly Spitfires, Messerschmitts, all those kinds of things. Then you've got the paint, but I was left to my own devices really. So Primer wasn't a thing. He just used to slop it on. Yeah. I always remember buying a big B-17 Flying Fortress and it had a yellow nose and it had a yellow tail on it. I just could never paint yellow, which is probably why I've got like, post-traumatic stress so that when, yeah. whenever I, if you see the amount of yellow painting to show on my channel yeah. it's like I can't do it uh, yeah. did, did you ever play the uh, Microsoft um, simulation of B-17 Flying Fortress no I didn't oh my god it, it was great when, when you, you could be different crew members yeah you yeah. could just jump between the different crews you could be like the ball gunner yeah. or the tail gunner and stuff like that I so shoot now submission it, yeah. but the worst bit is if you had to go and do like a bombing run so you'd like leave like I don't know Dover and you'd be heading towards like I don't know Berlin mm. <laughs> You had to fly the plane properly because if you if you skip to the waypoints, you'll end up in Finland because it just went off on its own. <laughs> so you have to sit oh. and do a four hour journey uh, on your own. <laughs> you, 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 fl you fly to Germany in real time. In real time. Yeah. <laughs> People are like, I mean, oh, yeah. I'm over France now anyway. <laughs> Can we not just bomb that? <laughs> I, 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 a, woman I, a woman I used to work with, um, a woman I used to work with, handed down her old uh, PC to a uh, old age pensioner father and got herself a new one and then her dad had managed to get hold of you know like um, a private jet sim yeah and she would come in and she'd just go where's dad and her mum would go oh he's in there flying flying to like Mallorca and he'd go in and she'd go in and, and he'd go and he'd, and he'd be talking away and, go, and, and she said how long does it take and he was well how long does it take to fly to Mallorca? She went, I don't know, two and a half, three hours. And he went, well, that's how long it'll take. She went, surely, she said, there's an option to speed it up, isn't he? And he went, yeah, but I'll be the fun in that. So he just sat there for like three hours. <laughs> just sitting there watching digital clouds yeah. go by. Digital clouds and just see. see. It's like, um, I mean, we all know the cinematic masterpiece of Snakes on a Plane. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And how that ends with a guy, they're like, is there a pilot on board? And he, and he jumps in and, and they're like, how many hours have you got? And he's like, oh, over a thousand simulated. Um, so they're all, just, they're all just training for that moment. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. And, you know, and, and respect to... Do you imagine, yeah. if, imagine if video games uh, were that were based around, uh, like... Call of Duty. Imagine if it had the bit where the helicopter landed and it was a four-hour walk to insert to the fight, <laughs> and he just had to play that four hours of just pushing forward. Oh, yeah. uh, imagine, um, imagine if he if he did that, and you were like some secret sniper, and yeah. and they were like, okay, so it's four hours, get to here, and then you're like, I oh, mean, I missed. To be fair, <laughs> some of the early Battlefield games you could do that because the maps never ended, did they? No, really? no, they were quite right. huge, oh, so right. you could wander off, find a mi mountain range, and just go sniper. Yeah. Mode yeah, there, yeah. and when you lie down, you went invisible slightly, <laughs> yeah. uh, so no one knew where you were. So I yeah. did that many times uh, with like the old battles, certainly like the World War Two ones. I always say to people, if you had to play a sniper game based on really being a sniper, no one would play it because you just find it really boring. Yeah, yeah. you have to like yeah. pee into a jar. <laughs> yeah. But yeah, B seventeen, love that plane. Always yeah. been a big fan I of played, it. I played a bit of because the, they did the. World War Two flight simulator, so I played a little bit of that back yeah. in the day. But I was always into sort of more recent games than uh, than anything else. So I just, just like pretty colours. I think that's what it was. It was just Formula One, just <laughs> yeah, pretty colours, and that's that's literally what um, I was yeah. brought up on. Nineteen nineties Formula One. It's, yeah, we used to uh, yeah, like yeah, races as a family. As well. yeah. Yeah. yeah, good games. Except when you had to like keep going to pit stop and losing your place. And you're like, oh, it's raining now. We need like to change the tires because it's raining. So <laughs> don't do that. My real car. I do. I do miss uh, with like flight simulators and like th like things like um, Formula One games when you used to get the little sort of piece of paper that go over the keyboard yeah, to tell you all the functions oh, yeah, and the yeah, keys. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I, I, used to, I, I miss those. Well, that's the problem with, with digital products now. Like That's the big box 
games yeah. from back. They were great because you'd have booklets and booklets Massive and thick booklets. You know, and, and you, could, you could literally sit down and, and spend a good amount of time reading it. And it was just all about like the history and all this kind of stuff. So it was usually you don't, you know, you probably get it maybe collectors editions now where they'll give you a digital PDF yeah. or something like that. But you don't you don't get that physical product anymore. And I think there's a lot to be said for for that. And perhaps that's why we, we like what we like and why yeah. we really enjoy like the war gaming because. You know, if you think I'm looking over there because I can see the Leviathan boxes, but you got you know a chunky rule book like that with yeah. full of lore that you can read through. You got some, you know, really nice miniatures in it, so it's all very tactile. Um, you know, and if you, if you, if you like that kind of stuff, it, it kind of it will attract you to it. So people will really enjoy that kind of stuff. I mean, I'd always ne I'd never open like the workshop products I got when I was a kid. So like, if I got like an Asher Gang or we got like the box game in Necromunda, we'd be in the back of the car just looking at the back, mm. working out how we're going to play the game just by looking at the back of the box. <laughs> going, oh, that's really cool. Oh, we can make that. And we yeah. can do. That. Oh, then I can shoot in the face. And we don't even know the rules at this point. We just yeah. literally got the back of the box. Yeah, but I'm very much a pretty picture type of person. I was, so I was literally that uh, stereotypical. Has the book got pictures in it? Yes, it has. Yeah. Great. Yeah. That, I like, I very like much the pictures. Like that I'm very visual in terms of how I learn uh, and how I engage with the world. Yeah. So it's, uh, yeah, it's, it's, it's really important. And, and that's probably why it, this kind of thing has hooked me in particularly because mm. it, it, everything is just so like, this looks really good. Yeah. I want to slice that pie. I yeah. still miss being able to rattle a blister. Mm. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> and be, fact, I, I move it around to see yeah, the bits around the birds. How the back look like. Is it? Yeah. Yeah. Always, always, always I, I don't know if anyone else used to do this, but sometimes you weren't sure if you got a base because you had the sponge. And that would yeah, be just, and it'll be hiding behind the sponge. Be like, yeah, is there yeah. a base in there? Did I get a base in this one? And it was always in there. I was thinking but, about this the other day, and because and I, a lot of people they've got a real affinity for sort of some of the classic Warhammer stuff, and I was thinking I don't really have that affinity. So I might be creating sacrilege now by saying this, but I don't necessarily have that affinity with some of the older stuff from the late nineties, early two thousands. But I think that's just because the new stuff is just so good and so hmm. cool. I'm just so wrapped up in in some of the newer things and the newer sculpts, the plastic molding process, that kind of stuff. That I just really that. It just, and I haven't got enough brain capacity to, to then be sort of like, oh yes, but I also like the old stuff as well. It's, so it's, it's a really interesting. I was thinking while I was driving up, I was like, mm, yeah, I've, I've definitely more sort of like on the modern stuff that that yeah. really appeals mm. to me. No, a bit. I'm, I'm I think the old stuff is still nice if you see it painted well, mm. but if you see it painted badly, I'm not drawn to it. Whereas I think you know, you look at modern stuff, the sculpting is so good, but you know, you, you know, I think. I never really cared because it had gone by the time I joined the hobby. That second edition Space Marine with just the bolter mm -hmm. across his chest never had any uh, any affinity to that, and it didn't exist when I joined the hobby. But when I, when Darren Latham did his painting Challenge, competition yeah. for it, yeah, they were they were so many beautiful models. But yeah, then it came down to how well they were painted. But as a as a stock miniature, I still think it's a bloody awful look. Oh, yeah. Thing. I mean, people were painting details that didn't exist, and that's, yeah, yeah, that's what you do yeah. for box packaging, right? Yeah, you paint yeah, details yeah. that don't exist. Yeah, but true. I was going to say, going back to the nostalgic thing, yeah. I mean, it's only for me for certain models that I had mm. when I was a kid or when yeah. I was younger. Yeah. So, like, metal eshes, I like having my old metal eshes, but I'd rather paint the new ones. Yeah, because yeah. they did... Um, so they reprinted, didn't they, the old third edition box, mm. minus, like, the heavy weapon upgrade screw and, and the... Some the land speed, I think it was, but I, I, even that I didn't really feel that nostalgia. Yeah. Even though that was my first box, I yeah. didn't really, I didn't really feel the nostalgia. But saying that, my f my most favourite bit of forty k art is the one I, can't, I don't know the artist, but you might well do. It's the Black Templar stood there with the the banner yeah. and his bolt gun, and he's standing on like dead Black Templars and stuff I'd like say that. Agent Smith, isn't is it? it? I I'm think it might sure. be. Yeah, yeah. yeah. that, that Smith, is my yeah. absolute favourite. And somebody did uh, somebody in the. One of the one of the rule books did them, didn't you? Yeah. yeah, and and there was um, it was the last it was the last codex for Black Templars. Yeah, so somebody to convert to them. Yeah, that's right. Yeah, yeah. but that, that's my absolutely most. And you know that that is probably a, a bit of art that was drawn in the. Is that the black and white the, one? Yeah, it's black yeah, and white. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah it's definitely. And, it was, yeah, it's, yeah. and that's my absolutely most favorite bit of forty k art. And it's like one of the most iconic. Yeah. For me, anyway. So so I guess it, it's just different. Because there's, there's a bit that, I always used to keep looking at that where there's like a spaceman looks like half his head's been blown yeah, away yeah, and there's yeah. like a bit of his like shoulder missing. I was like, yeah. oh, he died hard. Because that, that yeah. was that was the other thing. So I, I don't want <laughs> just to like goop about, just about, coming yeah. from the side yeah. of his head. Yeah. Yeah. Like the mesh through the under yeah. the arm. Because I always remember, like obviously uh, now it's very and, and you know Games Workshop would say they say that there are no good guys in forty k. But I still remember when I first got into the hobby, it was like, oh my god, the spaceman. Is amazing, but then when you see them like 
dead. Yeah. Uh, like the Crimson Fist Last Stand, for example, as a piece of art. That was really, yeah. really good. Was like, hang on, they're, they're, they're super warriors. How are they dead? Yeah. <laughs> that yeah. kind of stuff. I, I disagree like, with there's no so, good guys in 40k. The good guys are the army you collect in because you're looking at it from their perspective, yeah. right? So you're, you're fighting for what they believe in. Dangerous so, political ground here, Peter. Oh, I don't care. I don't <laughs> care. Joking, but I'm I mean, it's, it's that kind of vibe. It's like, you know, if I collect like Imperial Guard, they're the good yeah. guys in my mind in 40K at that time. Yeah. But then if I move to Eldar, I was like, you know, the Imperial Guard are baddies because yeah. they're just like these upstart little monkey people that are running around and uh, just taking over the galaxy. Let's let's shoot them in the face yeah. with some sh yeah. shuriken catapults. I guess it's a satire of the set. And yeah. Yeah. I never think of Gene Steeler cult yeah. as the good guys, but I do too. They are the goodies. But I do spend my time feeling really sorry yeah. for them because yeah. it's never ends well, does it? No, and, and they don't know what they're doing. It. They, you know, they've got the they've got the mind tadpoles. Yeah, so yeah, yeah. They're doing all of this work, and, and they're, they're going to just going to end up as dinner for the people they think are coming to see yeah. them. <laughs> oh, <we're laughs> getting turned into soup, great, yeah. Yeah. awesome, can't wait. No, I've always thought the jeans to the court. Cool. Uh, encompass what society should be whereas they, they care about everyone when that pure strain pure strain gene suit is born yeah. from a normal human and they're like oh isn't he cute let's keep him in the family and look you've after you've got to him. give it to them they've got a good work ethic because they're slowly destroying the planet they work on while also keeping the tally high enough that no one from Terra is going to come on and go why are you not working as hard <laughs> yeah. so you think you've got to appreciate the their work ethic <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> absolute yeah. grafters yeah, yeah. yeah. Mur murdered all the civilians of the imperial uh, uh, doctrine but yeah, yeah. Keep, keep in the Work so, so I think the losses. Like the the books do a decent job of sort of blurring the lines a little bit, or like because like, you're hearing it, reading it from the perspective of yeah. whoever it is. That's like, the word perspective. That's the word um, I was looking for. You when you play and it's that, yeah, that, yeah, and and you you're sort of like like I'm I'm on Kaifus Kane at the minute, and um, they're currently spoiler trying alert. to keep it spoiler free. I guess <laughs> yeah. if, if nobody's read it, like working with the Tau a little bit. Yeah. And then some of them are like, what? This is blasphemy. And this is quizzed. This inquisitor's just like, uh, shut up and do what I tell you. <laughs> yeah. You yeah. can stay behind, but you will die uh, because I'll get, I'll get Kane to execute you. So uh, you've got a choice. Yeah. You know, I think it's important that people have a choice. I'm reading, <laughs> it's, um, it's brilliant. I'm reading the Emperor's Spear at the moment, the Emperor's Spears at the moment. And that's quite interesting because it's set after the, the big rift and uh, they've sent out these, uh, these marines from the mentor chapter all disappear out individually to try and regain contact and yeah and um and it's quite interesting because the book is told from the point of view of this um, mental uh chapter um space marines three um characters that work for him one of them she like everything he sees she sees through her bionic eye and she f will tell him when he needs to have a resupply and does all of this for him and it's got these three characters yeah. And they go to this planet and they meet the, uh, um, a representative from the Empress Spears who are like qu quite a barbar barbarian planet. But the first thing that happens is, is this guy from the Empress Spears goes, what are, your, what are the names of your three members of staff? And the guy that's meant to be the hero of the book is like, why would you want to know that? And he walks up to them individually and asks who they are. And one of them has never set foot on a planet before. He's always been in. And he's like stretch your arms out, breathe deep, and you're going, it's quite funny because you're going, this guy, the other guy's the hero, but this other yeah. space reads immediately just made the guy you like look like a real knob. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> and I thought that's quite impressive to be able to do in a book that quickly. Which yeah. There. So um, I'm going to scoot back to the history <coughs> of Lloyd. How did lockdown affect you? Because you've been doing this for four years, so that started before. Yeah, it started before um, lockdown. lockdown. So did, did you find lockdown was beneficial for your channel? Yes. Because most people were at home, right? Uh, yeah, they were. Um, I think I was, I'm just trying to think of this. I can't remember what I had for breakfast, let alone for three years. <laughs> ago, but, um, it, it's one of, yeah, it was, it was an interesting time. So I still worked all the way through lockdown. So, yeah. so because. Uh, of course, yeah, you got your yeah, full time it job. Was, it, was, it was an interesting transition. The organisation I work for went from office based to working from home overnight. Um, so we had that transition and then there's figuring out how to use everything and then so so in my job so like I said I work in HR but I do a lot of things around uh, leadership development mm. management development I deliver a lot of training um, so it was transitioning that to an online model but of course the emergency response right at the start that was all put on the back burner it was just a case of you know getting getting through and um, there's a lot of people in the organization had it a lot worse than, than I did in terms of some of the requirements on them some of the danger they had to put themselves in uh, and things like that. So it's, uh, so from my point of view, I, I, w I wouldn't say I had a good COVID period, but I was very grateful mm. for the role I do and it enabled me to kind of, you know, be safe during COVID. 
the channel carried on as normal. So I, I guess this is the, the one of the things that maybe people don't realise about how I do my my tutorials is a box is released on a Saturday. I'm there queuing, yeah, uh, or I've paid extra postage to get a Saturday delivery. Um, or I, and I probably should shout out Kraken Gaming, uh, my local game store in, in Fnashi, who um, you know they're very good in in terms of helping me you know get get stock and things like that. So uh, I'm there on a Saturday to collect it when it's released. I then take it home, I build it, I prime it, and then I film a painting tutorial for release at six o'clock on a Sunday. Uh, so it's uh, yeah, I mean so. that's like. <laughs> Tight. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. yeah. I liked the way you thought about how tight the time was. And in my mind, well, I was just sort of like, just pushing 10 year olds out the way to get to the full <laughs> I'm on a schedule. Yeah. Get out of the way. Throwing the odd elbow here and there. <laughs> yeah. Um, but it was, yeah. When I first started doing the channel, it was a Saturday. It was, I was releasing videos on a Saturday and it got to the point where it's like, mm, that that's silly. I mean, was it on the, the same day you buy it? Not quite on the yeah. same day I bought it. Because I went through a period of not uh, doing, I, I kind of started off doing random things that I had laying yeah. around. Then I got into new releases. And then there was a period where I just did Space Marines. So you know, everyone's got Space Marines lying around. Um, and then, so that was okay. I was trying to release them on Saturday. But when it came to back, back around to doing the new stuff, it's all about, you know, because ultimately you want to put a product out there that, that looks good. Because if it doesn't look good, then you lose your credibility. Yeah. You yeah. know, with, with your audience and with your, your prospective audience as well. So it needs to look good. So you need to take that time in terms of producing it. Um, but also then in terms of my processes, you get to get better processes So everything in terms of like the paint names popping up at the top of the screen. They're all templates. They're all there. I can pull them in. I've got literally one for every pot of paint. Uh, I own a lot of paint. <laughs> so it's <laughs> embarrassing how much paint I've got, um, which I don't actually use half the time. So, so there's all that. So, so going back to kind of, it didn't really affect the channel. That kind of carried on as a, a business as cool. usual, really. The only thing that, um, would have affected it was if workshops releases were affected yeah, or you yeah. know their deliveries were affected those kinds of things so um i suppose that's the the benefit maybe of doing what i do on the channel is that you know workshop is an ever constantly churning machine of new models mm. coming out and things like that. So there's always something new yeah uh, to paint um did you find that um say like i like getting the uh, like the new kill team boxes were really hard to get a hold yeah. of like some of them we yeah. didn't get um or we do a tutorial for for one and then loads of the comments would be can't buy it like <laughs> yeah 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 did you have find that that had an effect I, th I think i remember chatting to you about dante a little bit um yeah um so that i, I suppose a lot of that and, and I, again none of us are at workshop now so we can't yeah. speak with any well i've never been at workshop pretend <laughs> i watched one of you guys <laughs> i've never worked at games workshop um i've spent a lot of money at games workshop <laughs> but one of the things that affected that was the warehouse switch over mm. and the fact that they were, I'm looking at the Leviathan boxes again, and, and the fact that they were they gearing up for 10th edition, so supply was very short. I was very lucky on some of them that I was able to get orders, but I'm, you know, I was there on Element Games, clicking at 10 yeah, o'clock yeah, on a Saturday yeah, to, try yeah. and, to try and get them. And some I was lucky with, some I wasn't lucky with. And then you get the comments there and it's like, well, that's great, but can't get them. Yeah. You know, and eventually you will you know so Cassigan for example I was really lucky I was able to get that box set when it came out did the Cassigan thank you for that by the way oh that's okay yeah um, <laughs> did the box set did the Cassigan that's great you know they're going to come out eventually yeah but the internet is not a safe place <laughs> you, you know the, the internet wants everything released three days ago yeah, uh, yeah. so whilst you, you put the video up you still you will then get those comments and be like well ah, I can't buy it but yeah I know that but you will be able to buy it eventually it's, yeah yeah. 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 And the, the video is yeah. not going anywhere yeah, it's yeah. Not, yeah the video would be and, and I guess that's the I'd say if there is a strength to my channel that all the videos that I've got on the channel are, are all I guess what you call evergreen content yeah. so you can always go back and look at them they'll always be relevant yeah um, unless somebody changes every single paint that they use yeah. so for yeah. example a small thing but i've done i've got a lot of tutorials using the old agrax earthshade the old null oil well now they've changed the formula on them it doesn't mm. necessarily give the same effect unless you put two coats on yeah so little things like that but generally everything's pretty evergreen so the strength from the channel is the fact that there's a catalog of content there that people yeah. can always dip into yeah. as and when and i'm very grateful for all the people who support me who will they'll watch whatever i put out and they'll comment and you can see i'll see through the comments that you recognize names and things like that people commenting quite regularly um and then you'll see new commenters coming in which is great and 
it's always interesting to see what um, YouTube is promoting because I'll get comments. Like I got a comment on a video about how to paint stone bases last night and I put that video out when the Lumineth were released. Oh, so yeah, that was yeah. a long time ago yeah. that the Lumineth were released. But it's, it's, in, it's always interesting to see what goes out. And, and one of the things that was really good for me as a channel in terms of my growth was shorts. So yeah. when YouTube first released shorts, um, I did loads of short form tutorials where it's like how to paint, you know, Blood Angel armor, how to paint Imperial Fist armor, yellow armor, whatever, whatever. But it's really simple videos that you can produce fairly quickly. Mm. I got into a habit of trying to do two, like a video on <laughs> video release on Sunday, then two shorts in the week. Which again, after about three or four weeks, became like, this isn't tenable because again, I'm not sat there doing it as my bread yeah, day in day yeah, out. It's, yeah, it's, it's yeah. additional stuff and. Um, one of the things I mentioned before the before we started, and <laughs> if it happens, pat my head at it. But sometimes my brain just is just be like, mm, no, I'm not going to work for about three seconds. So <laughs> I'll lose myself mid thought, uh, and that's a result of uh, I had a period off off work with ill health, but but then getting COVID at the first Golden Demon back, and after that, uh, at points my brain <laughs> my brain just stops working. It's just, it's something I'm you know you you learn. Oh, I'm learning to live with, and as yeah. as you recover and get better, it, it happens less and less, which is really important. Because I rely, certainly in my, my day job, I rely, I rely on having my wits about me in terms of having to deliver content, which can, you know, not all management development content is interesting. Some of it's <laughs> quite mundane and boring and policy related. Um, but that, certainly that's, and, and that's the, the kind of the focus of the channel has changed a little bit with that. So if you watch some of my earlier videos, it's literally me just bumbling along, talking to myself a little bit about what I'm doing and I'm mm. expressing my thought process as I paint. Uh, and explaining the process I go through it. And that was, uh, I think, for when I started the channel, that was okay. But when you look at the, you know, the plethora of people on YouTube, because it's not just other pe people who paint, it's people, you know, when I log on to YouTube, I've got, you know, you guys get shown to me all the time because I watch yeah, all yeah. of your episodes and I watch them all the way through. Um, so YouTube knows that I like it, so they will always present it to me. But then when I look at the other rest, there's, there's music, there's sport, there's all different things I may have clicked on. And in terms of the amount of Warhammer content I get, it's probably about 10% of what I'm presented with. So you're not just competing with other Warhammer content, yeah. you're competing with everything yeah. Yeah. that yeah. this person might like. That's so it, yeah. so that's, that's always a challenge. And, and in that, it's trying to refine the quality of what you produce um you know we were laughing earlier literally my entire channel i, I filmed it all on my mobile phone i, I don't have i was like a, a massively <laughs> professional <laughs> setup there's about 20 cameras I've, ne I've never had so much camera and lighting um but but that's it so i've, I've literally got like a, a, an led light which goes behind my, my mobile and i've got it on a, a microphone boom with a it's like a phone holder clip and i, and I film all my two shorts with that and when I started, it was me painting and, and just talking about what I was doing. But as we refine that a little bit, it's more kind of, um, I'll film it all first, then I'll go back and I'll do the audio and I'll do the editing and things like that. And, and a lot of that was quite ex experimental stuff. So the speed of some of it got quite quick. Um, and you get feedback from the audience saying, mm, yeah. I like the other way and, and kind of stuff like that. So it's always it's always trying to find that that kind of happy medium. And, yeah. and, and one really important thing, to, to, to always remember and people will always youtubers will say this or people on youtube or people who want to create content but don't this uh, well, the algorithm won't help me the algorithms this the algorithm that replace the word algorithm with audience yeah 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 and then oh hang on a minute now because <laughs> because you're not you're not making something for an algorithm you're making something for an audience mm. and if people like what you do and they like it and they comment then the algorithm knows okay this content's pretty good yeah and if they watch it all the way through and then they watch another one of your videos the algorithm will go oh, okay okay this this is worth watching so whoever this person watching this is there's other people like this person so i'm going to recommend this video to those other people yeah so it's all about audience-based uh creation and, and that's i guess where i'm where i'm going at and trying to find that sweet spot yeah. yeah i mean getting back to the tech thing as well it's like i've had a few people ask me in in like comments and stuff like you know where do i start if i want to do this and i've said a phone because mm -hmm. I, mean, I was saying to pat before i left workshop i was planning around i was saying to you like you know using a phone and stuff and it reminds me when i, I was doing uh, gcse art and um going to college doing art you'd get the, the folks with all the gear but no idea mm. I'm not saying you don't have any idea you definitely do the <laughs> reason why you have the gear comment. But, like. but you'd have like the, the, the person with a tin of uh, pencils of every ilk from like 10H all the way to 10B and they don't know how to draw 
Yeah. And you have like me with a HB pencil who could like sketch yeah. up something. And it's the same as you've got the will and the drive and you only need like a few bits of equipment and you can make great yeah. content. I mean, it goes to shape like, you know, you've got a, a massive following, you've got a patron and you, you do it all on your phone. Yeah. So it's, yeah, I, I just, this just comes in time, right? Yeah, it does. Uh, I spend far too much time on my phone uh, because you, like you said, you, you do have to live and breathe it and want to do it. Mm. Because if you don't want to do that, it is very difficult when you're feeling tired and when you're, oh. Yeah. I know it's cliche, but it's like, it's like anything in life. If you don't get excited, nothing happens. Yeah, yeah. You know, so you, you've got to want to do it. And it's very easy to put barriers up for yourself. Uh, and it's, I was watching um, Chris Evans' breakfast show recently and he had Al Schwarzenegger on. And I, and I really admire Schwarzenegger in terms of what he's done and, and, and how he speaks now. And you can see his growth and maturity as a person. I think he's like 76, yeah. 77 Arnie's, now. Arnie's great. Yeah, yeah. Like, you yeah. Know, and, and he's made mistakes. He stands up and he owns them. But one of the things he said is you're always going to get naysayers, but the biggest naysayer is yourself. And this is, you know, it could be quite scary for some people, but if you've got a plan B, then it already says you don't believe in yourself. You don't believe in yeah. what you're trying to achieve and what you're trying to do. Um, and that's that's it a little bit. And, I, and I'm... I, you know, I would love to transition this in, or what I do on YouTube into a, a full time, yeah. well, like you guys do. You know, I'd, I'd love to have a studio. I think my missus would love if I had a studio like this as well. You get me out of the house. Yeah, yeah. Uh, but, but a bed yeah, yeah, exactly. <laughs> yeah. So, yeah. Uh, but yeah, so, and, and ultimately that's that's the goal. And and my journey to do that is through creating more content, more content, more content, and hopefully, at, you know, at, at some point, it'll reach a tipping point. You know. Yeah. Um, yeah. We're all grown up. We've all got financial responsibilities and, and mortgages and those kinds of things. So, you know, you have to look after that first. And ultimately, after that, the aim is to, to be able to do this as a, as a full-time job at, yeah. at some point. Like I said, I'm 40 in January. And I always look back and, I, and I, I've always been a little bit of a butterfly with some things. Like I could get really into something and then, okay, after a few months, I'll leave it. But the one constant I've had for 25 years is Warhammer. Mm. Uh, you know, it's mm. what I love to do, it's what I love to do. And I just love the creation of that. I was chuckling to myself when you said about how I can, all the people, all, all the gold gear, no idea. I used to, I love colour pencils. So yeah, I've yeah. got loads of colour pencils, every every shade under the sun. A bit like my my paint problem. Um, <laughs> and I was like, I am, but I am the person. I like, I can't draw. <laughs> like, like, you, know, you, you think, oh, you, you can, I can't draw. And I, I thought, what, what I'm really good at is colouring in. Yeah, yeah, but that's yeah. what that's where the, the painting yeah, comes in. Yeah. I'm not, I'm not, I can't, I couldn't sculpt conceptually. I might have some ideas, but I wouldn't be able to maybe draw that conceptual idea yeah. for somebody else then to kind of sculpt it. Mm. Um, and one of the projects I've got lined up soon, I'm not sure if it'll, it may go out before this goes out, but um, I'm going to try some sculpting for the first time on, mm. on a miniature, which I've done little bits in the past, not to any note. Um, and yeah, it's just it's one of those things that it scares me a little bit, but but from the from a good thing because it's something I've not done and then to do it on camera well there's bound to be other people who think oh I'd really like to try that yeah. but I've never done it so actually mm. let's take this Welsh idiot and get him to you know how can he sculpt this and that, maybe people will learn something from it so um, that's one of the things I'm going to be doing in a video um, <coughs> in the future because because it, it's really important to, I, well, we're getting really sidetracked now I'm not even sure what that's, the original that's, point that's was that's the name of the channel can't draw yeah. can colour yeah. <laughs> I mean we technically do that with miniatures right we, don't yeah. just, we just colour them in colour in yeah. <laughs> Yeah, but all I did was colour it in. Yeah, uh, and I, but I can show you how to colour it in as well. And I can show you in a really yeah. easy way until yeah. you get something you're proud of. Which, go, sorry, I, I know I'm obviously taking over here a bit, but it goes back to the you call yourself. I would say you, the painting coach is a pretentious name. I don't think it is. All the years of like being in management myself and mm. stuff, coaching is such a accessible word, and you, you're not like dictating. You're mm. not like bossing. You're you're helping along. Yeah, yeah. you're doing you're it in such a way. Coach, not the painting manager. Yeah, that's right. exactly. Yeah, yeah. Uh, <laughs> all, 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 all people with their paintbrushes. But I, I think that's a that's a really important point. When people hear the word coaching, they're going to think of lots of different things. Um, you think of a football coach yeah that's not what i do but if you think about a management coach it's really really important and when you coach someone it shouldn't be a long-term relationship it should be a short-term relationship that helps somebody get over uh, an issue they have or become better at a certain challenge and and that's i think is what it's about because it, uh, if we go back to management speak if you as a manager give people the answers and you you yeah. you just tell them what to do that person is constantly dependent on you yeah so whenever anything happens or they need you know 
a decision made they'll just come to you they won't make that decision themselves yeah. where when you coach people they become interdependent of you so they can have that confidence they'll make decisions they'll be happier in the work that they do and that's really important and a fundamental thing of what i do in my i suppose my professional life is to give people or to give managers the skills they need to be able to do that and have those yeah. conversations because so, so many like people are afraid to sort of say well what do you think yeah yeah and somebody comes to you with a problem so, well what do you think T tell me how you would solve it and a lot of the time they might look at you like you've got two heads, but the more you do it, the more people's confidence grows and the better they become at their at their roles. And I hope that's what comes across with the channel is that, yes, some of it's repetitive, but when people ask, and, and this is another, perhaps it's a stupid thing I do, I don't know, but I, I literally respond to every single comment yeah. that I get. I literally respond to every we single comment well, we do. We say, um, yeah. Unless it's somebody <laughs> saying, hey, you suck. Uh, <laughs> we should, well, no, I do respond. I say, thanks for the feedback. <laughs> yeah. um, you know, uh, Have a nice so, day. So, yeah. <laughs> like, I remember the, oh, the Angron video. I was, I was so, like, I messed the audio up on the Angron video and it's really bad because I used a new mic first time I'd used it and I, and I for whatever reason I didn't pick it up when I was editing so I get so many comments on it I was, yeah thanks for the feedback I'm using a new mic I'll make sure it's better in the future and stuff like that but you know it, it's it's that's just one of those things that, that you learn and that when did Angron come out you know I was three like three years deep there. I'm yeah. still, still making mistakes yeah. um, which kind of goes you know when you go back to what you said when people say oh, how can I get started well, you get started by getting started yeah 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 you know and, and that's you, you just got to start it's like it's like it's like anything you <coughs> You don't build a muscle by just sort of sitting at home on the sofa. You, yeah. you go to the gym, you lift yeah. a weight, and then you go to the gym again. And you, it's only through repetition and constant repetition over time that you kind of get that. And it just gets just, better and better, yeah, right? that's it. And, and painting's exactly the same, yeah. you know? You don't just, you know, you, Albert Font, you don't become him, yeah. you know, overnight. And, you know, any mountain you've got to climb, you don't land on the top of it. There's going to be some smooth paths, which are easy to get up, and there's going to be some sheer cliff faces that yeah. you've got to really dig in and climb. Yeah, yeah. But that's with anything in life. That's not just painting. That, that's yeah. everything. You know? Yeah. Yeah. No, agreed. Yeah. I mean, Sorry for the. Uh, no, I mean, <laughs> it's like a life lesson. Yeah. Lot, yeah. You know? <laughs> I found the, the, the last time I looked at that, I thought I should have paid for <laughs> Yeah. But, when you can, it's fine. <laughs> <laughs> like, even from the comments point of view, when that person will say, like, you sound rubbish, and yeah. you respond and go, oh, yeah, I'm really, you know, yeah. we're working on it. Nine times yeah. out of ten, we found that, like, oh, I, that came across really harsh. I didn't mean it like that way. Yeah. But, yeah. 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 yeah because people... they, they, they want to be helpful, and you can tell they're being helpful because mm. they don't think you've noticed. Some but, people are not helpful. Yeah. <laughs> some people aren't, yeah. yeah. But, but, yeah, the coaches, I was just going to remind myself like the coaching thing was really interesting because when I was doing um, management and we had like academy courses and it's something that never really occurred to me and you do it naturally a lot of the time but there was like four steps of training someone mm. there was like dictate coach uh, direct coach and then delegate mm. and sometimes it's just task based so like someone like Pat who knows all about photography and this that and the other but doesn't know about sculpting kind of starts off as dictating and then mm -hmm. directing and yeah. then eventually it becomes coaching and you just like go off and school yeah, exactly. and I found that really like eye-opening and going oh, I've never really thought about it it's like steps of like doing stuff and um, we used to find this at workshop where someone's really good at a thing, but then you get a manager in charge going, I'm going to tell you how to do that thing you're really good at. Yeah. And it's like, you're a terrible manager because you're, yeah. you're not, you're not looking think, at what that guy can do. I think you get that in a lot of places. And um, I guess pe people watching this, will, 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 perhaps they work in places where you've got, you've got managers like that. And there's a, a theory called transactional analysis by a guy called Eric Byrne. And he came up with it in the 50s. And essentially it says that there's three ego states. There's, there's parent, adult, child. Mm. And if you approach somebody with a parent, adult state, you'll get a child ego state back. Yeah. Uh, sorry, an adult ego state, you'll get a child ego state back. So you might get a petulant child back. It's like saying, you'll tidy your room. Okay, fine, I'll tidy my room. And then two weeks later, it's a tip again. Yeah, <laughs> again, yeah, yeah. It's not lasting. And what you want to do is, is bring people to adult to adult conversations, yeah, you know, yeah. um, which is like, what we call coaching conversations where you ask questions you you know you probe a little bit you find out uh, and i always see this in all every organization will have this where they'll have managers they will become parent ego state and this is from their manager because their managers dictate 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 yeah, so yeah, then well, yeah. that's how i manage so i'm now going to manage dictate 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 and what you start to find you'll have organizations and some managers we will be managing like it's the 1980s because you'll have had somebody who's worked there for 30 years who's then managed somebody else who's worked there for 30 years who's managing some you know so you get this that you can see it going back in time to the 80s and that's why you still have 
culturally and from a leadership point of view, you still have organisations trying to manage things in this dictatorial fashion. Yeah. Uh, command and control is what we call it. Command And command and control doesn't work in 2023. And that's a big part of what I do is how we transition from yeah. command and control to actually something a little bit more engaging where people can really feel ownership and feel like they're doing meaningful work whilst also being really, really engaged in that process. Uh, so it is interesting. You can you can really track it back to see, you know, particularly I, I, workshops seems to be one of those places where you either work there for a really short period of time, Pat, um, <laughs> or, or, or you work there for a long period of time like you, Beach. Um, but, yeah. but it does seem to be that kind of organisation. Yeah, you either yeah. love it or you, you just don't yeah. you know, necessarily get on with it. And, you know, I know, Pat, you've talked about your experiences well, in the past, yeah. but, but a lot of organisations are like that. So you, someone who's worked there for 20 years, you're the person who perhaps you learnt management from would have worked there for maybe 10 years. I yeah, workshops yeah. a very young company, but, you know, but if you imagine... Some of the some public services and things like that. You have people who've, who've worked there for thirty years and thirty years, and, th- and then all of a sudden you've got somebody who's a twenty-five-year-old manager trying to manage a group of people in a style of nineteen eighties. You yeah, know, yeah. you will do. What I say I'm the boss, and, and it just doesn't work. And that's why you get that um, friction. Yeah, weirdly, I think workshop without being too controversial is is flipped around because when I started, it was very engaging, very mm. sort of like. What do you think? How do you want to do this? And even like when I was in retail, it was the same kind of thing. You had like a training um, file and it was very sort of self-led and very adult. And then even the studio, whereas in the last five, six years, it flipped around to being very 1980s. Mm. You must do this, you must do that. Which is why when this guy turned, it was like, this is weird and whack. I'm getting out. Mm. And I'm like... This is getting weird and whack, yeah. and it, requ- it required someone new to come in to like emphasize that. Yeah. Um, so I'm talking trendy speak by saying the word whack. Yeah, I never, I never knew you were so gangster. Yeah. <laughs> Young beyond his years. I, 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 yeah. only, I only heard it last night on a movie. I was just, <laughs> yeah. 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 I accidentally put MTV on. It sounded like you were like the Che Guevara of Games Workshop. <laughs> <laughs> Yeah. Every lunch break in the in the every lunch break in the car park with a fist in an air in the yeah. air. No, well, I, I came in here and I was like, "Wow, the culture here is whack." <laughs> just That's like, where I got it from. Just, is, uh, just like doing drugs. <laughs> that, that, that show, Citizen Smith. Yeah, he's not Wolfie. He's Foxy. Yeah. Foxy. I, I've just got to mention some. You know, we it was a couple of weeks back. We did a chat, and you're on about. We got on the subject of the. Would you steal a handbag? Would you steal a car? Yeah. So many people commented. Going, the irony is that company stole the music. Yeah. <laughs> I, I never yeah. knew that. Oh yeah, <laughs> yeah. <laughs> like, that's so I funny. Love, I love that music. Yeah. It's yeah, three D, and and the that how that's aged and how badly that has aged yeah. now, and it's like. Um, and I can't the see advent without, of three D printers. I can't. So I can't fun. see that advert without just the um, without just seeing the 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 mic take they did of it at the beginning of. Uh, one of them episodes in the IT crowd. Oh yeah, yeah. Oh, he was I like, would you, that. would you do? Uh, would would you would you kill a policeman? <laughs> would you then poo in his helmet and give the helmet back to his wife, grieving <laughs> wife and yes. children? And he's like, <laughs> and it's just at the end, and he goes goes back to Roy, and he goes, God, these these anti piracy adverts get really strict. <laughs> Oh, oh, or was it a random segue into the IT crowd when they when they privatized nine nine nine? Yeah, yeah. And then they had the. You ju- seem to jingle. remember the number a lot, though. Well, like, I can't, I can't remember the number. Yeah. I know that it was like oh wait, hundred nine nine nine, and then it just trails off, yeah. like, and it's like three, one. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, was great. that why in that episode that Moss sends? Do you have a fire in the office? Yeah. And Moss sends an email. Instead of just oh, phoning right. them up, yeah. but one thing yeah. it might be to do with that. Oh, yeah, it's brilliant. Excellent. So, I have a question about painting. Ooh, oh, um, try me. She yeah. might be better, but. <laughs> uh, no, well, well, this is something that I. Because I, I, I consume a lot of um, tutorials, and generally, like, I'm not following along, but I'm just watching. And, and, um, and when, when uh, Richard Gray was. We, we had him on, and he said he gets loads of comments about please don't use an airbrush please don't use oils mm. um and i've noticed in some of your recent videos that you started doing like in your like librarian uh terminate librarian you were like cool right here is uh oil paints we'll do uh some fluorescent liquid pigment <laughs> and it, you generally i don't know, like maybe like pushing the boat out from mm. like your non-traditional yeah. kind of like layer it wash it highlight it and, yeah. that, and that kind of thing um how has that been received and, and does that influence what you might do in the future? I think it's been received quite well. Um, 
if I talk about the librarian video specifically, that video yeah. did very well. Yes. I, I do think a big part of why it did very well because it had a, it had a banging thumbnail. It's like the best thumbnail I've ever done. So yeah. you see that, but I, I, I'm, I'm saying that knowing all, I'm not trying to be big headed with that. I just mm. have a look at my other thumbnails and said, you know what, that's the best thumbnail I've done. And I can say that and to top that would be difficult, I think. Um, you do get that pushback. <laughs> And I do actually get a lot of comments, um, like, oh, oh fa- thank God somebody who still paints with a brush, uh, not an airbrush. So I, w- I will quite openly say I use an airbrush. Mm. It's okay, it's a tool. It speeds things up. If you're painting an army and you can afford an airbrush, get an airbrush because it's going to massively speed up what you do. Um, so I think it was quite well received because I, a lot of my videos are designed to cater to as many people as possible. So, mm. you forgive me, I can't remember his name, but it might be Mark, the guy from X Games Workshop from Product Design, who came on. Oh, oh, uh, Tom, oh Tom, 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 yeah. Yeah, So yeah, he yeah. spoke about the hobby trumpet. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Mm-hmm. So it's the same thing with, with the channel, is that I want to appeal to as many viewers as I possibly can, because it's already a niche hobby. And if I'm painting a space marine of a specific chapter, that makes it even more niche. If I'm yeah. painting, you know, uh, a Tyranid, it's even more niche. It's very, very niche. It's only ever going to attract a certain number of viewers to it. Um, so you want to make that as appealing as possible. And, and you, and I'm not just producing content because I want to produce content. I'm producing content because I want to help people. And it's the best, and you might get this as well, it's the best thing in the world when somebody leaves a comment mm. that says, oh my God, I've just painted my vi- my model following this video and it's amazing, it's the best model I've ever painted. That's the best feeling in the world. I had yeah, a message yeah. on, or somebody tagged me on Instagram the other day, uh, they painted their Astral 6, uh, Umbral 6, sorry, the um, Warhammer Plus limited edition sniper model and they'd fall into short and it looked great and I was like, oh, that's really good. I yeah. was chuffed for them because they'd done that and they were like really grateful. So that's the best feeling and that's kind of, that's kind of why you do it. Mm. In terms of broadening that out a little bit, I think it's important to, to broaden out because there are products out there that are not just Games Workshop. Um, so whilst Games Workshop produce, uh, I'm quite happy to say and say they, they make the best models. They yeah, do make, yeah. they absolutely make the best models. Sometimes they can be a little busy. Um, <laughs> a little uh, busy. You know, uh, That's and, a polite way of yeah, putting yeah, heavily detailed. Yeah, heavily detailed, <laughs> that you don't necessarily need. Yeah. But, and I use predominantly Citadel paints. And the reason I use predominantly Citadel paints is one, that's what I've got. But yeah. two, they're the most available. Yeah. You know, yeah. most people everywhere in the world, if they're, if they're into Games Workshop, they can get Citadel paints. So that's, that's the, the kind of the starting point. But from there, you start to look, well, how can I produce really cool looking results really quickly? And that's where the the librarian came in, it's like, well, if I look at what Heavy Metal have done with that, that's going to take me a lot of time to produce or reproduce that on a model. And if I'm the end user, am I going to be able to do that? Am I going to get bored? Am I going to get discouraged? Is it not going to look right? Am I going to ruin this lovely model I've spent time painting? So, well, how can we do this better? And actually, we can do it with a little bit of oil paint, which is a different product. And mm. I think the the barrier to entry is always something I consider when I use a product. Um so oil paint is not for everyone. And that was very clear in the comments. So I got a lot of comments of, would this work instead? Would that work instead? What about this paint? What about that paint? And you're thinking, and you've got to be, I'm trying to be polite, so well, no, it won't work. Because yeah. the oil paint, you know, when you when you thin it down, it's got that capillary action, so it pulls it into all the recesses. You've just got a little bit of cleanup. If you try and do that with an acrylic paint, a white paint of that, it, you know, you will make more mistakes. So mm. you will have to go back in and fix some of it. Plus you won't get that uh, transition where it's really bright white in the recesses and just a little bit of white, uh, you know, towards the edge, which gives you that glow effect. Um, so yeah, t- to answer the question, it, it, I will always try and do stuff like that because it's really easy and really fast. And I think people appreciate easy and fast yeah. because of the world we live in. Uh, at yeah. the moment, yeah. uh, I think people want to get stuff done. And, and ultimately, I don't know if my audience are just there to paint or they want to game with it and they want to get it on the table looking good if they want to go to i don't know um so it's kind of always trying to find that that happy medium and sometimes <laughs> i'm very very fortunate I've, that was a i'm gonna give this a go it mm. just so happened that i give it a go on a video that i was filming you know it could have gone completely wrong yeah uh, and if it had gone completely wrong the benefit of oil paint is you just you just clean it off yeah, uh, yeah. and start again and i've done it a different way but I'm always trying to do little bits and pieces like that. It's like, it's the first time I've ever done this. In my mind, it works. Yeah, um, yeah. And so we'll try it on a model. So it's been very fortunate that most of it has paid off. Um, and similarly, people always, they always ask, well, how, how do you know what colours to use? And it's just, I suppose because the Citadel paints is very simple. It's it's a base and, layer and then and like another yeah, layer is a yeah. highlight. Um, which, which is the thing. But if people say, oh, how can I, what, what colour should I use to paint this? I'm 
bit like Rain Man, where it's like, well, use these three colours, yeah. and it'll work. But just because you know, it's an experience thing. Yeah. If I was new to the hobby, and I never, I wouldn't know. But because I've been doing it for so long, you just know that these colours work well together. This shade works well with that colour because of how it fits on a on a colour wheel. But people don't always want to necessarily know the colour theory behind something. They just want to know what works. Yeah. Yeah. Because they want to get it painted and on, 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 on the table. Yeah. Did that yeah. answer your question? Did I ramble? No, no, that was really good. Um, <laughs> Because I I uh, painted a librarian recently, mm. and the I I was really put off by like detailing like all of those things. I was like, if I try and paint this in a traditional way, I'm gonna mess it up. Like fact, and mm. spend loads of time cleaning it up. And then um, yeah, your tutorial dropped, um, and I was like, ooh. And I'd recently I'd used a couple of oil paints very recently because I wanted to try them out mm. and, and try and like not be scared of them yeah. so, so to speak because I think I spent quite a long time um, in like the Citadel way of doing things and then branching out and use some different paints uh, from different brands like I use a lot of AK now um, and then I, I go back to Citadel paints and I'm like why are they different I don't yeah, like this yeah. <laughs> um, but yeah I went out and bought like the white oil, white oil paints because yeah. I've seen people um, do like pin washing and they, they usually have black or burnt umber I think yeah. is the guys from um, uh, oh crikey quarter paint they always yeah. they always use um, a lot of those but then seeing white and then being like oh yeah of course so I went out bought the white oil paint mixed it up and then was just like <laughs> like oh and, and you just like dip it a little yeah. bit and and i found when i did when i tried it i was like scared of making mistakes and um not using enough so it wasn't really sp yeah. spreading out and then i was just like i can always clean it up yeah. i'm just gonna go for it yeah, yeah. and then it, it was amazing and yeah and, and that's I, I know I, I know where you're coming from there, and it, it's, it's like, oh, I don't know if I should use this. This this will it work? Will it not work? And I always say you can always clean up with oil yeah. paint, and even if, even if I'm using normal <laughs> acrylic paint, if you make a mistake, yeah, you can paint over it. You can fix it. You know, it, nothing is fatal in in terms of anything that we do uh, in in the hobby. You can always pull it back, and you can always just do it a different way. Um, but I think it's important that you try new things. Yeah. And I think it's yeah. important that we you, you push your personal limits a little bit because it's only through getting uncomfortable that you, you grow. And, you know, we're not talking like, I'm going to go from sitting on a sofa to jumping off a bridge, you know, with a bungee cord and I hate heights. We're not talking about that. We're just talking about little things. Which yeah. Like, Ooh, yeah. Feel a bit thin. And the other thing as well is, we talked about military modelling earlier and, and things like that, but a lot of those techniques you will find <laughs> in military modelling. Um and you see some of the, the quality of stuff that comes out of that. But mm. when you actually dig into the technique, it's a fairly simple yeah. technique. Um, you know, I think like pin washing is really, really effective. But weathering as well, and you mentioned cut the paint. Yeah. Uh, which Henry does a lot of modular, modulation yeah. in terms of that with, with oils, different colour oils and things like that. So yeah, it's, um, it's, it's, it's a really good technique. It's... I wouldn't say it's unsafe because you think, well, I'm using white spirit, which is flammable, whereas acrylic paints are not mm. flammable. Yeah. Um, so there is that element to consider, and also the films. Make sure you're, using, you're doing it in a well ventilated room. So it is um, a little more kind of risky, I guess, than than just using pure acrylic. But as long as you're careful and you take health, yeah. you know, health safety precautions, you know, get high vis vest on, get hard hat on, yeah. <laughs> you know, for, get your clipboard out uh, for for. But but it is it can be a more effective and quicker way. Of, of doing things and once you it's like, like once you've got it yeah. you, you've got it and you yeah. know the consistency to mix it and things like that because again it's another question you might get this as well how, how do you thin my how do you thin paint what consistency do you thin yeah. paint to yeah. and the answer is it it's always is it depends because yeah. if I've got a brand new pot of paint I've just bought today that was produced last week thinning that is going to be very different to something I've had and I have got paints that I've had for years that I've opened and closed, opened and closed. And yep. There's a little bit of sludge left in the bottom. That's going to need a bit more to get it going, yep. a little bit more persuasion yeah. than, than something that's brand yeah. new. So uh, even though they might be exactly the same colour. Yeah. So, it, yeah, so it, there's, there's always that experience thing. And I, I guess sometimes people might look at, at you, YouTubers <laughs> as a shortcut to get somewhere, but there's never, ever a replacement for YouTube or life with your own experience yeah. and learning, yeah. you know. Well, the thinning paints thing I get a lot and I try and... Because base paints, layer paints, contrasts, shades, they all thin in different ways. Mm -hmm. And my th thing, I, because I, I'm not there sat next to him yeah. a lot of the time, I try and say, if you can see a bit of the palette underneath, you know you're getting too thin. Yeah. So, And it's all about feel yeah. as well for me. I can feel mm -hmm. it. And that, that comes yeah. with experience. It does, yeah. and, and talking about like, you know, 
because it res- resonates with me and the stuff we do on the channel as well, is that you'll try something and you've never done it before, but you've obviously got that mindset to go, how do I make this easy for my viewers? Mm. It's like, we had Dirty Damn Rust, never used it in my life. And I was like, I want to use it. I want to paint loads of scenery with it. Slap is it, it going to be really complicated? And I think sometimes there are folks that over complicate things unnecessarily, yeah. whereas you've got that, that mindset to go, I want to make this easy for mm. my audience so they can find it easy so they can get things painted. If you want more complex, by all means, make it more complicated for yourself and watch these other random yeah. channels about dirty down and how you need to like put it through an air gun and leave it for 48 <laughs> hours to bake in an warm, oven. Warm it up to a certain temperature. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> and you know, that's the stuff. But yeah, yeah, you, you're exactly right. And like I said about getting started with, with creating content, it's like, it's like anything. It's really easy to talk yourself out of doing something yeah, that yeah. pushes you outside of your com- comfort zone. And that's that's biologically programmed into us as humans. You know, if I said to you, what, what's your brain's only job? What's my brain's only job? The only job of your brain. <sighs> Staying alive. Yeah, it is. <laughs> but yeah, but your brain's breathing. only job is to keep you alive. <laughs> yeah. So you think about how we've evolved, the fight or flight. Yeah. You know, as soon as we come to something, we're not, well, we're not comfortable with that. We, we turn around and go the other way. And yeah. It's the same with anything that you come up against and painting is no different. You see, like, that's really complicated. I'm not sure I'm going to be able to do that. So yeah, I'm just yeah. going to park it there and buy some more models. Yeah, you know? yeah, yeah. I was like, oh, I just might build some more. But that's it, because yeah. your brain's only job is to keep you alive. So it's always trying to move you away from perceived danger or something that takes you away from where you're comfortable. And that's why, you know, it's very comfortable so far it's very nice and we're very at ease but but that's why you know we have an obesity crisis in the country because it's, it's so easy i can just get i can order my food online i yeah. go to mcdonald's it's there in five minutes those kinds of things so it, it's you know and this isn't it might sound a little bit preachy i'm not trying to come across as preachy so apologies to viewers if that is what's coming across it's more sort of making the point that biologically we're designed to stay safe yeah yeah so every time we come up against something that might question that we take a step back and it's it takes a uh, an effort to actually move forward on that and you'll have you'll meet people who are really good at certain things uh but might struggle in other areas and that's because they're really good at using their energy for that particular thing yeah, yeah. but if they have to go and have a challenging conversation with someone they've got a ugh, that's an exhausting proposition yeah because actually do you know what that's not comfortable for me so i've really got to get myself up for it and, uh, and things like that so it's, it's a really fascinating area of study that i haven't done enough in and really interests me but it's certainly applicable to everything we do with channels yeah. because what we've got your or what you've got to remember what i've got to remember is somebody may have just spent a hundred quid on a model mm. you know that and they may have that might be a significant portion of their income and now we all assess value differently if you spend a hundred pound on you know a model that you're going to use every week and you're going to enjoy pouring your love your heart and love into painting it that's real good value but if you know you may have spent that money and perhaps you maybe shouldn't have spent that money on it because you may have should have spent on something else and then, then the fear is that well i don't want to ruin it i don't want to mess it up yeah uh, and that's why i always always say in my videos don't worry you can always go back over you can always fix it you can always go over mistakes you know it's it, failure isn't fatal those kinds of things yeah. and, and you're, yeah. all, you're always learning and I think it's just putting people at ease really yeah when you talk about going outside your comfort zone um, can I ask a little bit about um, the planning and the preparation that went into deciding to go for Golden Demon because you <laughs> you put in was it a squad of sword brethren yes for Golden Demon was it last year? year so before? that was the that was the, uh, probably the year before. So that was the first Golden Demon back after COVID, which is a Warhammer yeah. World. And I put a I put a Kratos tank into the last one at Warhammer Fest. So I got two finalist pins, which I was really really happy with. Um, what in terms of the planning? Yeah, you know, because you know, because obviously instead of either a painting for yourself mm. or b painting for the channel, you now. Not to suggest you don't obviously always do your best for the channel. I'm sure you do, but then to that thing of up in your game and mm. and did you how was juggling the hours required for that whilst doing the the channel and your day job and did you yeah. have to sort of timetable yourself into it and how was it? Firstly, you're right about it is different when you paint on on camera and perhaps you use this when you're painting on camera. You've got to take into account the fact that there's a lens and you need to stay in focus and you stay in the shot and you know you need to so you're kind of painting a little bit like this it's a bit more difficult yeah, where yeah. i'm painting for golden demon i'm painting like this 
I use magnifying glasses when I'm painting for myself for yeah. Golden Demon. Whereas I'm painting for camera, I can't wear magnifying glasses because I can't see. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> I can't see what I'm painting because they're like 4x magnification. Uh, so, so there's that kind of difference. So, and when I'm painting for myself, painting for commissions, I'm always using the magnifying glasses. So it's always a lot closer. I encourage everyone get magnifying glasses early. You don't want to wait till your eyes start. Just get them early because it just literally makes life so much easier. Mm. In terms of putting into it, yeah, it, it is about scheduling it. So. Um, Sundays is always video day, um, regardless. I mean, it's, some days it's not, and some days I'll, I'll try and do something earlier. So uh, the one I did before I came on the show was Blood Ravens. I kind of painted that in the evenings to make sure I had it done because obviously I had to drive up to Nottingham yesterday, so I wouldn't have been able to do it yesterday being Sunday. Um, and then for Golden Demon, it's yeah, it's about, right, I need to put the hours in for this. And, and I always laugh at when I think about my first, because it was my first ever Golden Demon. I started off with ideas for about six or five or six entries. And I kind of whittled that down to, to three entries. And as time was going on, three entries became two entries. That two entries became one entry. Um, and then that one entry became a squad of five, became a squad of three. Oh my days. <laughs> so I literally, it, because that's the, and it was the first time I'd really painted for competition. So I was kind of, new to it and as I didn't really know what I needed to do um so and I'm probably I'm one of these people who always leaves things the last minute anyway um so yeah it was it was scheduling that time but then it was like well this is the competition this is what I got to do so this was like I'm up till 10 o'clock 11 o'clock and I'm painting you know every night for a week to get it done I did the tradition of finishing it off in the hotel room in uh, <laughs> I was gonna say in, I thought yeah, I saw yeah, that yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah. Ch cheeky bit yeah. of premier in action um with stuff and and it, but you talk about planning and I couldn't have got it more wrong because I got there and I'd done the bases separately mm. and obviously everything's on blinking little bits of stick so you can paint sub-assemblies. I got there, I went to put them on the bases. It didn't fit. No. So, oh, no. so joking. the angle of the feet didn't match the bases. Oh, oh. bugger. So this was like the day, I was, so I was just like, oh, what am I going to do? And then I don't know what it was. I just had, you, sometimes you just think, oh, yeah, that'll work. So I went in the bathroom, got some tissue paper scrolled up into little balls I brought super glue with me to stick them to the bases and literally just saturated this tissue with super glue and I was prodding it with the back end of a brush into a sort of rock shape to make it oh. and then just painted it to match the rocks underneath <laughs> and it was just like it was one of those things that you're just like oh do you know what but yeah it's it's your heart must have sank when you realised they weren't going on there honestly Stress is a good motivator. <laughs> I think that's what it was. It, it was that. It was that. It was fight or flight kicked in. Yeah. I was like, right, we're going to fight. We're going to. What can I? It was more kind of what can I do? Because it's, it's very easy to just be like, oh, yeah, and just go woof, and then you've got no entry. Yeah, absolutely. it was very easy to do that uh, sometimes. So it, it was a case of like take a step back and do you know what? What can I do um, in this in this situation? And I came up with that. It, it didn't look fantastic, but it matched. Um, and it got a finalist pin, so I was really happy with that because the yeah. standard in Golden Demon yeah. is insane. Like it's so high, and you think oh, I've done something really. I'm really, I'm really chuffed with that. And and I and the, you talk about pushing ourselves in comfort zone. I really pushed my mm. comfort zone on that in terms of some of the stuff, painting um, metallics, um, true metallic metal in terms of that style. So make yeah. sure you've got additional sh shading and shadows on there brighter highlights those kinds of things rather than what you you know you'd paint it with retro drama chuck some right and flesh on it highlight with liberate to gold and you're, you're done which is that might be something i do for a channel so for a tabletop model yeah that's yeah. acceptable but for golden demon the standard is it's not even like 10 steps higher from tabletop take what you maybe consider table it's really really high um and that's good because it, it that it's the kind of competition that brings everyone along so mm. you, the standard uh, and that's the thing. It's like, well, I really want to win a Golden Demon. One of my absolute life goals is to win a Golden Demon. But there is that thought in the back of your mind. You think, would I ever? Because the standard mm. gets better every year. More yeah. people enter every year. Yeah. People come out of nowhere. Like, blinking heck, I've never, you know, who are you? Uh, and it's just, the, the, the quality is just absolutely superb. And I think, I never really understood the concept of entering to, you know, to say you entered until I kind of did enter. And it's, mm. it's about that. Do you know what? where am I now? If I want to get better, what have I got to do? Um, and for me, it was, it's, it's about how I paint and how I um, render light on a model. <coughs> so is it a case of painting heavy metal style, which is all edge highlighting and things like that, but actually to have to paint something which is actually rendered in a much more natural way. And if you look mm -hmm. at the, the winners, that's what they've done. 
Um, so I was chatting with Albert, who won the Slayer Sword with the, with his high elf, which was absolutely fantastic. And we did we did a coaching session where he, t- he talked me through some of those things. And I, and I think that's also really important as well: is not to have that ego of oh, I know everything because I certainly don't when it comes to miniature painting. So actually finding someone who knows more than you is performing at that higher level and just kind of tapping into that a little bit is really important as well. So I had some coaching with Albert where he talked me through some of the things he thinks about when it comes through um, lighting and that that kind of stuff. So hopefully i know gd uk hasn't been announced for for next year yet but it'll be sort of easter early summertime i'm guessing based on what it was last year um we'll try and maybe kick on and maybe get a commended entry but that the planning mm. for that has already started oh cool because if you leave it too long yeah yeah, yeah. you put yourself in a situation where you're not giving the best account to yourself well and, we had richard gray on the show and he basically said that he starts the next goal and yeah. like the day after the yeah. previous one Makes exactly sense. yeah because uh, and again, Richard Gray is someone I really admire in terms of how he can just render, like mm. the Dante he's painting. <sighs> it's, it's, offensively it's good, isn't it? Yeah. Yeah. amazing. Is. That, that's yeah. the, that's the way amazing. to put it with Richard Gray. Uh, is offensively and, good. And in, in fairness to, to him, like, I didn't get a chance to meet him at, um, at the Golden Demon, but I kind of messaged him on Twitter afterwards, or X these days. And he was really gracious in terms of giving me some feedback on my Black Templars. Because from where, I, where I'm standing, that's the best model I've ever painted. Mm. Yeah but it got a finalist pin and didn't win. So it's no any of the best model in the world. So how do I go from the best model I've ever painted to potentially winning a gold team? Yeah. What is the trajectory that I need to take? And a lot of it is around con- concepts of, um, you know, you've, you've got s- silly stuff when I look back now, but you've got <laughs> three models that are based and you've stuck them on a plinth. Well, there's no integration between those yeah. three models, yeah. you know, and the balance of the models is off. Cause I had one with a shield on its back, two with a shield. I think it was two of the shields. No, two of the shields on the back. I can't remember, I kind of blacked out from that. But one of them had, he had two-handed sword running and then you had the kind of the, the I was going to say the sergeant, but the Black Templars don't have sergeants today. It was the Castellan. Yeah, yeah. Um, oh, uh, yeah squad Castellan, Castellan yeah. yeah. So, so he was at the front, he had a shield out and then I think the other guy perhaps had a shield out as well. So it was, was unbalanced in terms of how I presented mm. it. So, so do you start to get into the nitty gritty things then, which is the stuff you take forward. And like any model, all you try and do, you try and just improve, 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 improve. So, um, yeah, I'm hoping to do a um, Gravis Imperial Fist Command Ooh. Squad. Oh. For, um, and I was hoping to do it for the last one. I'd already started converting my Gravis Apothecary. And then they blinked and went and released one with Leviathan, didn't they? Oh, of course they <laughs> did, yeah yeah, yeah. yeah. yeah, but the pose doesn't really fit in with what I've got, yeah. uh, what, I was, what I've got in my head. But I converted a Gravis Standard Bearer and things like that. So, But again, it's about then how you paint it and you make it homogenous. Because I think for squad, it seems to have gone a little bit towards diorama a little I, bit. Like I, was, squads, I was just going to yeah, say which, that some of them, a lot of them, they all, they all, Put them on on like a, a painted base, yeah. and they all it does look like yeah. a little yeah. miniature sort it's of like diorama. It's like the yeah. Sigma command set that just looks like it's a diorama. Mm. Yeah, yeah. 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 Which, which <laughs> is, this happened with Duel as well, doesn't it? The the it increasingly instead of it being two well, miniatures fighting the diorama has become a they, big. They part. put them together now, haven't they? Are they do, I do believe they have now, yeah. Yeah. which I think. I don't. I, you know, there, there's reasons for that decision. Are they? Should they? I, I don't know if they should because I think you get amazing dioramas and amazing duels. Yeah. And now and they're all in the... two figures, one's yeah, anything And now from, they're yeah. all fighting for the same yeah. three trophies, which, uh, you know, I kind of get why they've done it because they need, they want to put uh, Horus Heresy in because obviously they've taken those. So when I did a Kratos, I put it onto 40K last time. That's now going to be a Horus Heresy model yeah. as opposed to... Because you can't use them in 40K anymore. Um, so um, I, I get why they've, they've obviously tried to tweak the hmm. tweak the, the the categories a little bit, but you know, because um, I was you know this dual is one of those hyper 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 competitive. They're all hyper hyper competitive categories. That you you look at it and you think, well, what have I got a better chance of winning in? None. Lord of the Rings is the answer. Well, yeah. I, don't, <laughs> I mean, even I, that it's competition I, stiff. I, I yeah. The artists that do that. Yeah, if you look at you know some Andy Wardle like the the Elrond that he won with. Yeah, I think he won with. Yeah, yeah. It's just yeah, it's, it's, it's just insanely amazing. good. But for for every Andy Wardle the insanely good Elrond, there are ten insanely good models that yeah. you know on a different day. That if Andy's not there, yeah. you wouldn't think. Well, you know, if Andy was there, he'd have won because they 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 are so good. Um, Andy's another painter I really admire. You know, in terms of some of the quality of the stuff he puts out, it's just no, absolutely it's well. amazing. Yeah. yeah. Okay, I, I'm like this because I live in deepest darks. Wales. I don't actually. I've never met <laughs> most of the, these these people there because just admire from afar. Speak to them online now and again and things like that. Yeah. Um, 
you know, so it's uh, you're my new Warhammer friends, by the way. Oh, cool! Oh. Yeah. Warhammer Yay. friends. Yay. Um, yeah, so uh, I'm trying to create as many, create some more Warhammer friends as, as, as I grow older, and sort of you know stop being stop stop being a weird guy in his spare bedroom painting little plastic soldiers and get out there because I think that's, all the weird guys who sit in their spare bedroom. <laughs> yeah. <and take away. laughs> that's it. But we do ours in an office. Now. Yeah, 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 yeah. I know, it's like professional. It's like, it's like, I, I will say this it's to, to, to the viewers as well. It's a very nice and when when it's finished, it's gonna be a very nice little. Little, little studio, wait. so I'm, uh, yeah. I'm, I'm, I don't even care if I don't get invited back. I'm just going to come back. Uh, well, and, we'll yeah. before you, we, we went on over there is going to be a gaming zone, so that, that could just be like playing games at night with the, the three of us, yeah, like and stuff, yeah. as well as like yeah. doing some content. So we're, as always, we're, we've got a, um, an amazing community of patrons, and they have an opportunity to ask some questions. So we're going to move on to that, awesome. if you don't mind. Yeah, before we do that, okay, uh, I brought some gifts. <gasps> oh, a gift. Always a Gifts. fan. Gifts. One each. <laughs> oh, as oh. it happens for, for uh, my uh, painting phase compadres. So I've got them in this uh, <laughs> small spot. cardboard box. Uh, <laughs> Warhammer size. I'm just going to hand them out. Now, I don't know how I'm going to give you yours, Pat, because you're like three miles away. Yes. Um, but I'm going to pass it. I'll start it. with Jeff. Oh, Because he's thank you, just here to my right. Ooh. Oh. oh, oh, you star. Thank you so, so much, Lord my of man. Contagion, is that the... Yeah, Lord of yeah, Contagion. Lord of Contagion. Lord of Contagion. <laughs> it makes you all wonder what you're all getting Wonderful. Out, you? For Peachy. <gasps> Thank you oh, very much. Oh, it's a Ventrillion Noble. It's a Ventrillion oh, Noble. And a Mighty Noble as well. Yes. Have you used... Oh, it's a lovely Ooh. paint job, that man. Thank That's you so much. That's the new Cadians. Nice. For Patrice... Ooh, oh, I've got a custard. He has his a sword, brother, Captain Man. Oh. That's going to be your leader. This is my leader. Shield, ca is shield captain. Shield captain. Yeah. Oh, so that are. looks amazing. So I'm going to drop the box. Drop. <laughs> just don't uh, drop the mic. Just pop this over here, so you can have him later. Yeah. Get some close up boy. Please. Um, <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Oh, that's so, wonderful, uh, man. Thank yeah, you so much. Just, um, Obviously, I do watch you all the time when you go on about your... I was a bit worried when you said you were going to do Gene Steeler Cult. Oh, no, but I'm, I'm only... These I, guys I are only... I haven't got any Gene Steeler Cult. No, these <laughs> are only, they're only on sabbatical until they get a codex. Yeah, so that's, yes, oh, that's, that's a Lord of kind. Contagion. It's lovely. That Thank is, you very much. Uh, yeah, that's the new Cadian Castellan with the old Empire Captain's head thrown on. It's best head. Yeah. I love it. I love, I love the little forked beard <laughs> as well. <laughs> and his yeah. moustache. What I do like is you've managed to get the nice lacquered armour effect yes. going on there as well, which is really, really good. I watch you more than you know. <laughs> <laughs> um, I know that you gloss your armour. I do I like a bit of gloss. <laughs> and yeah, and the shield captain is just from the from the warden box for, for you, for you, yeah. Pat. Oh, that's so, incredible. Uh, Thank you so much. Yeah, you can, oh, you man, that's really kind of you. Thank you, Lord. Really yeah, I feel uh, my gift to you is not as personalised oh. as these. Well, I don't want it. Um, <laughs> that's fine. <laughs> I should leave it. <laughs> <laughs> this is a model of the the painting phase uh, power armor colour scheme. Oh, uh, the face I would say is a mixture between both Jeff and Pat. Although you can imagine it without a hair, it could be me. <laughs> uh, and this is a painting phase well, sword brethren. Uh, in a in a little box. Oh. So that's one of our early early tests. Uh, oh, look at that! Very nice. It's it's not to the <laughs> levels of your paintwork, but well, no, it's very nice, very kind of you. It's very, a definite very a mix between Jeff and Pat. <laughs> that is definitely yes, Jeff and I Pat. Can see as that. A, as a, as a space room. So is that a head that you sculpted, or is it? One no, one? no, that is a um, resin. And I think Stormcast ah. resin head. Okay. Because um, yeah. when I was doing original, I was going to be doing some. Uh, Black Templars, and I'd got a load of the beardy heads because mm. I wanted more my Black Templars to look a bit more beardy. Because uh, I feel that, that that's how the sword brethren used to look like bold heads, beard, yeah. not bold heads, beard. And I just realised that just looks like Pat and Jeff. So I was like, well, it would be yeah. weird not to have Pat like and Jeff. Unholy power. union. Yeah. In, in drawn form, me and Jeff are indistinguishable. So everyone just makes me ginger. Yeah. Um, oh, yeah. And, 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 you get me ginger, and I yeah. get me grey, which is. <laughs> We're, yeah. we're bits of ginger, just, just, yeah. just there. Uh, just little bit. I don't know who. I can, love this guy. He's so cool. He's gonna leave my army. Yeah. yeah, no, I enjoy, I enjoy painting them as well. Oh, that's um, really good, man. Thank you so much. What is your, yeah. what would you be your faction of choice? That, that is something oh. I meant to ask. I mean, probably the patrons are going to ask that as well. Yeah, Pro I was probably going to be really vanilla and just say Space Marines because I, I just love, love the Space Marines yeah. aesthetic. And um, I, I love the old Space Marines, like the old Tactical Squad, Firstborn, as it were. But yeah. uh, and when Primaris came out, I was like, at first I was like, mm, oh, really, why have they done this? Money grabbers. But actually, yeah, it's just, uh, just a better scale and I just really yeah. like them. And, yeah, I think they're quite cool. And I, you know, not everyone will, will agree with that. And I think you know, it's fine. Primaris Tacticals might be better, but the good thing is, 
you can take your tactical weapons and your devastated weapons you can chuck them on a primaris body and then everything's the same scale yeah but it does what it's meant to do in the game yeah, yeah. Uh, it's a little bit more expensive but you know it's fine but i enjoy painting that actually yeah yeah I, I, i'm not sure i could do an army of them but i, I did enjoy it <laughs> yeah what, i, I just after a while not wanting to do what an army decided to do the silver templars <sighs> is that the one from the they're the ones from, from yeah. the magazine yeah, yeah. Really, really, um, really briefly is like when I said I really like pretty things. Well, one of my channel viewers sent me the Silver Templar decal sheet. It's oh, a right. really nice decal sheet. Mm, it I, is, I, but I've got no use for it until then. The tent came out, and I thought, oh, you know what? I could use that decal sheet. I love yellow. So I'm just used to it yellow, you know, getting over that <laughs> PTSD <laughs> of the B17. Uh, <laughs> and, and yeah, it was just, it was just one of those things. It is, it is quite the other thing, it's an easy scheme to paint. Yeah. Because you can airbrush the armor, the metal armor, give it a little bit of a. Well, I was going to use oil, but I didn't need to because the armor was so shiny. And I, I think I put gloss varnish on as well. The null oil worked really well for it because mm. it just there's no surface tension, so it just gets in the recesses. And yeah, it's just a, a simple army to paint because it's very. Like, like I said, I've got lots of things I've painted or half painted, but I've not got a 40k army. And yeah. that's, that's what I want to do for in 2024. I want to get a 2000.40k army done. So it potentially will be guard, though, looking at the Christmas boxes. So, oh, yeah. Yeah. Talk, yeah. quickly talking of shades, have you tried the new AK Deep shades yet? No. Are they the enamel ones? No, no, no they're, they're, there's acrylic ones and they've right. got some enamel pigments as well. Yeah. And they, they, yeah, they do like a bunch of enamel shades as well as um, normal shades. But these deep shades, um, there's not a vast the ray of colours it reminds me of like like early days shades when it was just like red blue purple green back and in the devil back in, and yeah, time yes and devil and mud the, banner yeah, black it's yeah, that yeah. it's that kind of era of of tones but what i found is they work like the new shades so they kind of run into the cracks a lot more mm. don't hang around on the surface as much but they're like super matte right like the original yeah. shades it's almost like the best of both worlds you get that nice sort of like it goes in the cracks yeah but it mats everything down. It gives it a bit of a blend as well. Oh, we've talked I'm, about I'm, this before, like the old yeah. dipping. I'm not using them. We'll have, we'll have a go after this. Yeah, no, 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 I really enjoy using we'll, them. We'll get to the desk. And see use them loads. Very matte though, and they dry mm. super matte. Um, well, so if you've good. got metallics on there, it yeah, will. But that's a top tip. If you've got... Um, if, if you've got uh, glossy highlights or bright highlights and you want to matte the shadows down, and similarly, mm. if you've got matte finish, then glossy shadows just helps the contrast on the miniature. Yeah. Mm, cool. cool. Thank you. Questions. Questions. I mean, questions? That, yeah, that was interesting. Pat's. Uh, yeah, yeah. I've got, I've got my phone. Uh, You've got every single item there, haven't you? <laughs> just like <laughs> wired in. He, he is literally <laughs> the, the cult mechanic right now. <laughs> yes. No. I always say that um, I look like a football commentator with these. <laughs> I need to get. I need to invest in some cooler headphones. Um, you look cool, man. Yeah. And a look like you know jacket. what you're doing. Yeah. yeah. Yes. <laughs> my mum says I look cool. Um, yeah. So. Um, Matt says, "Absolutely love the paint, Coach. Uh, I have two questions. Sorry, and then and then uh, asks three questions. Um, <laughs> That's the thing with our that patrons; is, they can't top, count top it. Top top math. Math. <laughs> yeah. Thank you for the love, Matt. I no, no, it's you. good. I mean, the, the third one's brilliant, so uh, he can he can get away with it. Uh, do you play any war games in local stores? And if if so, which stores uh, are your favourite? No, I don't." Um, purely from a, a time perspective, it is something I'd really like to change. I'd really like to to sort of start throwing some dice again. Uh, yeah. My local game store is Crack and Gaming, and uh, Dan and Mel they're really really good and really supportive of me and supportive of the channel as well, which is really really helpful. Uh, so a big shout out to them. Um, those are the two. What's the third brilliant question? Um, oh, so that was that was one question actually. Oh, so that was like a two in one. So maybe oh, it was four. four questions. Um, <laughs> really can't count, can we? So number two was I'm a I'm a Welshman. Fancy a pint? <laughs> <laughs> well, um, yeah, ab absolutely. If you're at Warhammer Fest or anything like that, come come and find me, and I'm more than happy to have a have a, have a little drinky. Yeah. yeah. And then the uh, the last one uh, gets a bit personal. I don't want to make you feel uncomfortable, uh, so you don't have to do it. Uh, also, I think Pat has a crush on you. Uh, just look deep into his eyes and say, Balthazar Gold. It's going to happen. I'm, I'm, happen. I'm ready. I'm ready. <laughs> have, you, have you steeled yourself? Yeah. So, uh, yeah. I, think, I think it's really important to contextualise this and say that yeah. Pat has a voice message that I left him of me just saying... Balthazar Gold um, for his personal oh, use as and when he wants it. Chills. Um, yes. I mean, I'm hiding my, my <laughs> right now. <laughs> I was proud of, yeah, so, so, so Pat has got that. And yeah. uh, we're going gonna, we're gonna to do some sound bites after this as well. So he's going to have as much Balthazar as he can <laughs> handle. Did you know, Lloyd, every now and again... <laughs> Tom Jones, isn't he? Yeah. <laughs> yeah. In the last premises, which was Pat's house. Spare, spare house. Yeah, spare house, spare, spare, spare bedroom. Spare yes. bedroom. <laughs> I meant yes. spare bedroom, um, not spare house. Yeah. Uh, 
<laughs> I'm a millionaire. Um, but every now and again, you just put it on and just like go, Peach, Panthers are gold. <laughs> So good. It does not sound like that, does it? No, <laughs> no. God. That's me trying to be a Welshman and failing miserably at it. You should hear my German accent. It's great. Yeah, yeah. Oh, brilliant. So, uh, Sam asks, are you a voice actor? If not, why? Uh, no. And um, I've not something I've considered or, or thought about, really. Um, and if, if you are an agent and you can get me paid work... <laughs> I'm, yeah. a, I'm open to it. I want to hear uh, it. Is, is it seems really nice on the channel, but where you live, obviously, would also sound like you as well. Wouldn't yeah, well, yeah, I like to think that I've uh, slightly like more cultured tone. Oh, than, okay. uh, well, you never know. Fair, yeah. Workshop but, might uh, grab you. I think Bud Ravens need to sound Welsh. Yeah, Who do we ask? I think, uh, but that, like we were talking before, I came before we started filming. Actually, that my accent changes based on the company I'm with. Yeah. Because yeah. Where, when I'm at home, when I speak Welsh at home. Um, Oh, it's, it's 100 miles an hour and it's one of the things I've kind of said to the guys if, if I'm talking really fast please wave your arms or something because uh, yeah. it'll just get completely incredible there'll be a few viewers from the states and uh, across the uh, across the channel be like I have no idea what these guys are saying yeah. right now yeah. <laughs> like I the Germans I, uh, struggle with us I, I hail from like the north of England like the uh, I think a guy on TikTok calls it the mythical north because <laughs> um, it's like you know Hadrian's Wall and blah 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 mist basically um, everywhere yeah and, and even like, in the summer yeah. uh, and, and spe speaking Cumbrian like farmer language and stuff and, and when I go home I start speaking but you, mm. I slip into it, like slip or slip yeah. back into it. Yeah. Um, where you could wander up to someone and just be like, it's the Gan Yam. And, <laughs> and they would know what that means. Um, what does that mean? Uh, are you going home? Ah. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. They'd be like, right, everyone's learned at least yeah. one. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. 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 Is the Gan Yam. Um, <laughs> yeah. It's brilliant. Uh, Cumbrian, the Cumbrian language is uh, absolutely phenomenal. Yeah. It's wonderful. Anyway, uh, takeaway of choice. Oh, Difficult. Um, I would probably have to say, currently how I'm feeling right now, Chinese. Ooh, yeah, yeah. Get the salt. Get the MSG. Y yeah, yeah, just yeah. yeah. I'm not particularly adventurous when it comes to food. Um, you can probably mm. tell by my build. <laughs> 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 okay, so uh, Paul asks: Is there any mini you really wouldn't want to make a painting tutorial for? Um, no. There's not. I will kind of uh, enhance that answer a little bit by saying there are some minis I struggle to paint sometimes. So remember I was saying I, I'm not necessarily one for nostalgia and things like that. And certainly some of the old Lord of the Rings models, like the 2001, yeah. mm. um, they are very difficult because not so much the painting, but just the prep that needs to go into them because the, the mould lines and certainly the more modern stuff is a lot, e lot easier to paint. I think... Yeah. Um, I'm really excited for Old World, um, and because that was fantasy was now something I really got into but wanted to, and so I'm excited the Bretonians are coming back. I'm probably a little reticent about we talk about over detail models. Um, that potentially is uh, so. I, I'm not sure if it's the, the questing knight, yeah, yeah, who's got his big sword and he's just got all this rucksack going on that I'm not sure is needed. But um, so it's just little things like that. And when it comes to painting tutorials, one of the things I think about is. If we're going to paint all these different satchels and bags and all this kind of stuff, then that's just more paint that we need to use. And if you're just starting out, you're not going to have all that paint. Yeah. And that's probably one of the criticisms the child gets, actually, is people say, well, you're using all this paint. Yeah. And and my kind of my pushback is, well, if you're painting an army, you're going to have this paint anyway. But I totally get the fact that if you're just starting out, yeah. you're not going to have 20 pots of paint. Yeah. Maybe 25, 30 pots of paint. Because, yeah, well. in the iron warrior videos that i did mm. i um followed along the tutorials exactly and and i priced up each one as as part of it and i think it was um juan hidalgo's was the most expensive and that mm. was that was like 80 quid mm. worth of paint i think um, wow. so if you're doing one miniature and you spend 80 quid yeah. like, it's it's but a lot chances are you're probably going to do an army though eventually yeah, right? exa yeah, exactly so. yeah, yeah yeah and that's where value yeah. comes around yeah. Too, isn't it? <laughs> yeah yeah definitely uh mike asks what's your favorite war game Mm -hmm. that's probably a difficult one for me to answer because I don't really play that that much yeah. um, and I, I you know something like 40k I guess would be something that I'd aspire to play and be invo you know get involved on that side of things so I'd, I'd probably have to say that um, I do enjoy sort of board games just to, to give something for a different style I do like Flamme Rouge mm. which is a yeah the cycling, uh, cycling uh, game yeah, yeah. So that, that, that's good I enjoy that and I saw there's a there's a Kickstarter out at the moment I can't remember the name of the game but it's a Formula 1 version of Flamme Rouge which looks like oh, it could be quite cool. quite fun and interesting to play with a family 
And you like Formula One, which we know. Yeah, I like, so. yeah, I like Formula One. I said 90s Formula One. Now. Just, uh, <laughs> yeah. Just, uh, yeah. Take me back there, you know. <laughs> <laughs> okay, lovely. Uh, tea or coffee? Coffee. Oh. First thing in the morning. Uh, but I'm an avid tea drinker for the day. We're going to have a fallout then. Straddle both sides of the fence, Beach. You know? yeah, yeah. Yeah. Oh, there's, there's, oh, you're a fence sitter. Yeah, you're one of them, are you? You don't have to be absolute in everything. He's a man yeah. of culture. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I'm not. I start, I'm the same as you. I start on a coffee, coffee and then and tea for the rest of the day. day. Yeah. Yeah. I guess that's why I need four or five coffees first. No, teas, yeah, because I, I, I just don't drink it's, coffee. It's, just yeah. point is that it's okay to like different things. <laughs> it's not. <laughs> not on this channel. <laughs> this, 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 this is real life, not the yeah, internet. Yeah, My preface is like sometimes like someone will go, oh, you might not know, Peach, I'm, I'm not a fan of tea. I'm like, that's cool because it's more for me. Yeah. <laughs> uh, it's okay. If you don't like tea, that means there's... Seeing the benefit in every situation. There's more tea for me. Yeah. Yeah, especially Marmite. My wife doesn't like Marmite, so I just get to get all the Marmite at home, Ooh, which is Ma great. Marmite peanut I, butter, yeah or nay? Oh God, no! I, I like Marmite. I like peanut butter. The two merged together is just we, weird. Yeah, I really like it. I mean, I like yeah. pickles and egg, I, and I don't know if it was off, but I had a pickled egg once at a chippy, and it was horrendous and nearly made me sick. <laughs> and I was like, I like pickles, I like egg. Why would this thing not be nice? And it was yeah. horrible. Oh, that's recommend. interesting. But that might have been a, a really dodgy one. Yeah. Uh, Okay, uh, Nick asks, uh, was there any model that you painted where you got halfway through and thought, this isn't going right? Keep up the great work. Thank you, Nick. Um, no, I don't think so. Um, let me think. I just, not anything I've done a tutorial on, because believe it or not, I do think about what I'm going to do before I, <laughs> do a, before I start painting. On the, you know, rarely, not, not in any great detail, but I do tend to think about it. Um, so I've not had that. Certainly, I think I've had. Um, okay, yeah. So if we, the, the video I did with the army painter speed paints mm. with the Age of Sigma stuff. My intention was to do the whole box. Sorry, the City of Sigma to do the whole box, um, but I didn't do the metallics on the steel helms very well, so it didn't come out as well as it did on the uh, on the cavalry. So that's probably going to be a, a start again um, a scenario yeah. for them. Um, but yeah, re when it comes to doing stuff for the videos, obviously I'm, that's not for me. So I'm doing that for everyone who's watching. So I try and take a bit more care over that mm. in terms of you know think about it. Um, so yeah, touch wood again. Um, no issues like that so far. It was a great water fastness, wasn't it? You were doing um, the yes. yellow one. Yeah, yes, yeah. The yellow one. Yeah. yeah, that was a good video. I, wasn't, I enjoyed that. Yeah, very good. Um, try and do some quick fire ones. Faces Ooh. and bases. Uh, love the tutorials. Um, have you got a top three essential paints we should all try? Oh, God. Uh, <laughs> chrome Model Air. I, I yeah. see it coming up quite chrome, a lot. Chrome from Blue Model Air. Uh, so yeah, that, that, that as a bright silver is fantastic. covers really well. Um, and just you can just use it straight out of the pot. I think that's a really difficult question. Is the three paints. You need a good black, I yeah. think. So AK Black is my favourite black. Yeah. Um, I think I find it... And it dries really matte as well, which mm. is nice. Um, a part of me wants to say Mephist and Red uh, because again I really like that as a paint but um, yeah maybe the Mephist and Red mm. would be the one that's a really that's a really that's different question say, yeah. Red from Pro no uh, well, well, so it's, it's, it's got a very specific application for, for your blood, blood ravens, blood ravens yeah, yeah. Um, yeah. it doesn't come in handy for much else but that's okay because you're going to paint an army of blood ravens you get, you, you get a pot yeah. paint that'll work your way through I always so. have a Mephist on Red uh, air Mm. On the go is yeah. always a pop up. I don't, I yeah, it's a nice tone of red, though, isn't yeah, it? Yeah, it's it a very, that's a very difficult question. And with just with the with it being air, it's already just that little bit thin. Yeah, it's like quite, just, quite good I know places. Citadel quite often gets quite a lot of of I would say hate or abuse or what have you because the whites are a bit interesting, um, but. Everybody loves the reds. Everyone mm. like, I will, like a lot of people say that the reds are great. I will make a controversial statement. Ooh. That I really like Corax White. I, 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 I yeah, it is the loads, lumpiest, yeah. bumpiest paint in the world, but I think it's really good. Yeah. yeah. So I've, I mean, I've got a vortex mixer to mix it up, but even without that, you just stab it with a back end of a brush, get it on your palette, and thin it down, and it covers really, really well. And because it's off white, you can use a contrast paint over it, and then you can highlight it with a pure white. It makes white really easy. Yeah. My favourite one now for doing the job of white when I don't want to use white is uh, Pro Acrol uh, Ivory. Mm -hmm. it's great um, and then also lovely. if you then need to just bump that a bit more there's pro uh, roll bright, oh, bright art bright ivory, yeah. ivory yeah. as well yeah, oh, right. yeah great Excellent. great for um great for eyes and teeth 
Yeah, but yeah. being someone that was, I suppose, encouraged to use nothing but Citadel product for like 20 plus years, you kind of get used to its yeah. drawbacks and its what what you can get from it. So like for me, Corax what I used to use all the time. Yeah. Um, granted, now I'm in a place where I can use any paints I want to, but I still don't have ill will towards Citadel paints because I used them for so long. I knew what I could do with them. So yeah, they do get a bit too much stick, I think, sometimes. Yeah. There'll be someone in the comments going, you're wrong! You're not allowed an opinion. Sod off. <laughs> <laughs> wow. That's a uh, uh, kind of aggressive point. Could be <laughs> like, you, yeah. yeah. Happens like that quite a lot on me. Yeah. It goes south it's quick. like a switch, isn't it? Yeah, it is, yeah. <laughs> it, it, you keep switching the back. It's, it's <laughs> this set of, There's actually someone behind just like tweaking it. Pulling his strings. Yeah. yeah. I mean, we all know that famous line from the movie that uh, Peachy only deals in absolutes. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> and then he pulled out a lightsaber. <laughs> yeah. And like, all you, goes you, wrong. You and McGregor were. I got no legs. <laughs> As you can see, they're all robotic. <laughs> oh dear. Um, what aspect of the miniature painting hobby do you find the most relaxing, and then and then uh, opposite, potentially the most stressful? <laughs> I don't think I find any of it stressful unless I'm painting on a on a deadline and, uh, and things like that. I think the, the painting itself is probably the more relaxing bit, and the bit I least enjoy is probably cleaning sprues. Um, yeah. you know, and getting them all nice and smooth. But then sometimes, uh, this is this, you don't deal in absolutes because sometimes I can't, I just haven't got the mental capacity to paint, so I will build a model mm. instead, you know. So yeah. it's, yeah, it, it yeah. depends on, I guess, which way the wind's blowing yeah. at, at that yeah. particular moment. Yeah, lovely. Uh, someone has asked, uh, go to go to brushes. So currently using Rosemary and Co. Series 33. Size one is my kind of go to at the moment. I use that for a lot of things, including painting very small eyes. Um, the important thing with the brush is that it's got a good belly to hold paint and it's got a really good tip, uh, so you can get some really good precision with it. Um, Windsor and Newton, I've used I used Windsor and Newton for years, series seven, but they've just got quite expensive recently. Uh, so I go back to Rosemary and Co. Mm. There's a link yeah. on all my videos for them. Yeah, I found uh, <laughs> Series 7 started getting a bit weird at one point as well, where they were just kept splaying. Yeah, yeah, I've seen that. A lot yeah. of people putting those scraps up going, bought yeah. this, look at the state yeah. of it. Yeah. Oh, right. I think a lot of that comes through through resellers as well. So yeah. uh, if you buy direct from Windsor & Newton, you tend to get less issues because they're obviously checking as they grow up. Yeah. Sometimes you buy them on Amazon and things like that that you can potentially have damage damaged results. Oh, right. Interesting. Mm. Um, and then uh, the the questions that I currently haven't read. Oh, there here's one that's not about feet. Um, <laughs> uh, I saw he's eleven and a half. Uh, yeah. Uh, well, no, no, it was not. It We're was talking only to fancy. Do, yeah, 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 yeah. It's getting a bit too risque. Um, <laughs> for your personal projects, do you have a preferred style of model to paint, e.g., sci-fi, etc.? Um. Yeah, I suppose it's, sci-fi is probably where I kind of is my interest, <laughs> and, and some of the areas I find uh, I find more appealing. So I, I, yeah, I do like sci-fi more so than uh, than fantasy. But that's not to say that I dislike fantasy. Again, it's not an absolute. It's mm, just a case yeah. of you know that I'm drawn to those things, and and it was space screens that drew me to the hobby in the first first instance, and I'm, that hasn't changed in twenty plus years. Yeah. So you know, still yeah. still be them. But you know, some of the new Sigma stuff, and like I said, I'm excited for for Old World when it comes out as well. Mm -hmm. Brilliant. Lovely. I am, uh, for the safety of uh, our, our viewers' ears, I will probably leave the Patreon questions. <laughs> Can we not ask the cheese one? At Is least? it not a cheese question? Uh, um, well, oh, there was one well, about... Is that linked to the feet, though? Um, <laughs> yeah, the, yeah. The, the, the cheese... Right. Uh, uh, right. Is this cheese with feet? Is this is why... It's no, your... no, 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 no. This, oh, this, um, so, so Alex asks, which... This, like, the... They get, they get. It's in not just the favourite cheese anymore. Yeah, it's, yeah. Yeah, um, it's like what cheese would you, you put in a box game? Was the one the other week, wasn't it? <laughs> yeah. Um, <laughs> Alex asks, which paint line tastes the most like cheese, and what kind specifically? Oh, good God, Alex! Um, <laughs> well, I, I will. <laughs> I mean, um, I mean, it's, it's kind of interesting how you get to that question and, and your thought process to get there. Uh, you, you do you. Um, <laughs> I, uh, I, I'm not a brush licker. And I can honestly say I've never eaten. Uh, I never will eat after seeing Tom's uh, video of what's actually in the acrylic <laughs> yeah, paint. Yeah. Oh, yeah. Uh, oh, even now, I still eat them. Yeah. <laughs> I just, uh, <laughs> I've seen, oh, like yeah for, for me, I, yeah, I, I couldn't possibly tell you. 
Yeah. No. Okay. So, the, so can we ask then? Yeah. What, what's your favourite cheese? Because you um, obviously you did tell us you thought about it. Yeah, I did. I did. I have thought about it for a come on because it's like the one constant question in however many <laughs> yeah. pods you've done. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, and so I'm. I'm not. I said I'm not very adventurous food, but I do like a nice melted brie mm. uh, in a baguette. Yeah. Ooh. Yeah. I, yeah. I had a bit, bros here. Bit, a bit of ham. I had. Um, I'll, I'll have to. Uh, maybe I can show the show the picture. Um, I went to a garden centre over the weekend and I had a bacon brie and cranberry uh, panini mm. and then a cat just came and sat on me <laughs> and it was the most wonderful thing ever. Um, it smelled it, your cheese, mate. Yeah, yeah. Um, so that was yeah. before you got your sandwich. And it, yeah, and it was, it was wonderful. There was everybody... Everybody and then the cat chose yeah. to sit on me. I felt very special. That's nice. Aww. And then, that is nice. And then cats, I had cats are picky. Yeah, and then I had uh, some melted brie, and it was a delight. I'm going yeah, cool. to do a shout out, and we're not sponsored by Audi at all, but no. Audi do like a circular <laughs> bread thing that you put in the oven. And there's a lump of oh, camembert, into it uh, you and it. you put it in the oven, like and it comes tear, out, yeah. and you tear ah. the bread, and you just dip it into the can. Oh, yeah, oh. I think it's I've got the big shop to do today. So <laughs> <laughs> yeah, you do, yeah. yeah, you do camembert. Does that? Yeah. Well, that, that, yeah, that would be a... It's usually a Christmas, Valentine's kind of thing they do, so yeah. it'll be coming yeah. in retail yeah. sh shops soon, yeah. folks. Well, I wanted yeah. to shoehorn um, <laughs> shout-outs in. I did say to my, to, to my mate Ben, I would give him a shout-out, uh, Ben Mudge on Instagram, because um, I am significantly lighter than I used to be, and it's thanks to Ben's kind of coaching as well, because I was like, I'm, I'm 40 in January, and I'm getting really fat, and food was a big issue with that, and he's really helped me in terms of sort of, you know, getting getting my head on straight with things like that, what I can, can't eat and stuff like that. So I will say a big shout out to Ben because actually we all talk about, well, what do you like to do? What do you not like to do? Hobbies and stuff like that. But when you feel crap in yourself because you're eating crap, it, it's really difficult to, mm. to kind of get yourself up for painting it and it just becomes a chore. And eventually it's like a phone battery. It, it'll die. Yeah. Uh, and, and it's the same for you. You burn yourself out. So actually it's really important to, and I'm learning that now as I'm getting older and I start to make those uh, involuntary noises when I move. Yeah. <laughs> to yep. kind of look after Picking myself. Picking out the pop so, the floor now. Yeah, yeah. yeah exactly. Yeah. So, I mean, yeah. this is quite a low sofa. So, I mean, me and Jeff are going to have to sort of cradle ourselves yeah, out of this. Yeah. Um, okay. Rock our way out of it. Yeah. Oh. You'd have to get a scoop or something. <laughs> so as you talking about looking after yourself and trying to get your, 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 your control on diet, and Peachy just was like, and then he put it in the oven and it melts. <laughs> I know. But that's it, but I'm thinking that's, that's, but that's okay, because it's a nice treat now and again. You yeah, actually yeah, now and yeah. morning and night right. for you. Um, but I mean, yeah, so, so it's, it's, it's again another one of those things where we talk about it's not just about, you know, painting is one thing we do, but actually we, we all do lots of different things and we, yeah. we've all got lives yeah. that we need stuff. So it's, it's yeah. important to look after yourself and Ben's been a big help with that. Mm. So give, yeah, give Ben a shout out for Ben. That. Yeah. yeah, good yeah. job. Well done, Ben. It's quite, as you say, uh, talking about getting older, I'm re recovering uh, from having COVID the second time. So, all right, sorry. Um, <laughs> oh, yeah. Sorry, I keep recovering from walking up the stairs to the, yeah. to the office. I, I wasn't like... going to say that, you know, you kissed Patience me and zero. gave me COVID. Um, kissed, kissed you quick. Yeah. And, and it's to the point now where this didn't happen last time. I cough and my lower back hurts. <laughs> and, and I'm like, oh, oh. And, yeah, it's, it's just like stretches. Get your steps in, get your yeah. steps in, do some yeah. stretches. Yeah. Up there with my, my wife who had uh, such a horrendous chest infection once she managed to cough so hard, she split her lung and had to go to hospital. I was in for about three split days. Split her lung? Oh yeah, God, that's the thing. Created a tear in her lung. Oh so her God, God. lung was filling with blood. Yeah. Isn't yeah. It? yeah. Yeah. Oh wow! I, mean, it, I was like, because it, it was like I'd like phoned her the night before. I was in the army still, and she went, "Oh, I've got a terrible cough." And then the next day, I'm at work, and the uh, the guard commander, who obviously gets all of the information for anything going on, came and see me. Says, "Your wife's been taken into hospital," and I'm like phoning her up because she was back in Liverpool at the time. It's like, yeah, I coughed really hard and I broke me lung. <laughs> like, I'm on my way home. That's mad. <laughs> Yeah. I'm not going to cough anymore. Wow. Yeah. yeah, that's it. No more coughing <laughs> for me. Yeah. Pat coughs a small lung up over there. <laughs> yeah. yeah, over there. Yeah, uh -huh. right. Yeah, perfect. Wonderful. Thank you uh, very much for coming on. Well, it's thanks been for having me. It's been thanks thank for the gift. Thank well. you for the gift. Yeah, my yeah. my. my uh, I've got my new commander. Awesome. I need to take some pictures of these before you. Yes, uh, we do. We'll yes, take, take them home. Stick them out. Otherwise, we'll yeah. get shouted at. We will. No, it's been great. I've been wanting to come on for a long time, so it's nice to finally. Finally, get here, meet you all in person. Yeah, well, thank you and for traveling all the miles. It's appreciated. Yeah. It's fine. 
a you long way. Parts by me lunch. Yeah, so. Yes, yeah. yeah get some, there's, a, there's a nice uh, Green King down the road called Cornhill. It's oh, very yeah, nice. there's yeah. a pub. Yeah, there's a Warhammer good World quite close by. Yeah, yeah. yeah I'm going to have to watch myself there tomorrow morning. <laughs> Be very careful. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Might need an escort. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, a chaperone. <laughs> yeah. Love it. Perfect. <laughs> well, thank you very much. Thank, thank you very much. much. Thank you. Cheers. Thank you for watching. Bye bye. Bye, everyone. Stay bye, classy. Bye.